play with okay, we the, you know. are live. Awesome. Well, welcome everybody to Hoover, Alabama and the Hoover Metplex and Morton Potter's Baseball and we believe the first out-of-state broadcast of any sort of MPTV resource, whether it be through the NFHS network or obviously here on the MPTV YouTube channel. The Potters are about to take on the Christian Academy of Knoxville. I'm Ryan Lindley here with Eric Myers. Uh, we just got done with a couple games. We had a JV game, a combination of the Potters juniors on the varsity and some sophomores. It was 11-1 Potters win. And then we played a sophomore game against the host team, the Hoover High School Buccaneers. And our sophomores were victorious 9-4 in that game. So, so far, obviously, the Potters have done well in what we'll call the undercard games. Now we are getting ready for the main event, the varsity game between the Potters and Christian Academy of Knoxville. So, as Coach Lynn just told us, we're down here in Hoover, Alabama. Gorgeous day for those of you back in Illinois. 74 degrees and sunny here. Uh, great days. We're actually, as Coach Crawford's going to walk out and meet the umpires, we're just going to take ourselves and put us on mute and we will come back. We have two cameras, so just bear with us. Might be a little bit delayed, but uh, we'll do the best we can. But we are live on YouTube, so we'll try to send out that link. But we're going to go on mute.
Three. Okay. All right, five, six, seven. Here we go. We are live and recording here. All right, back from the Hoover Metplex in Hoover. The road. One out of in lovely Hoover, Alabama, and getting ready for the Potters against the Christian Academy of Knoxville, Tate Rowley on the mound for the Potters. Yeah, so good day out here. Uh, for those of you who didn't tune in already, you have Eric Myers and Ryan Lindley uh, right here for our Potters broadcast. Potters are going to be the home team. They're going to be on top of the scoreboard, though, uh, for us currently. But as we try to work through some of these technical difficulties, it's telling us we're live. Yeah, we just, again, ask that you stick with us here as we work through. This is the first Potters baseball broadcast from out of the state of Illinois. Uh, again, and It's pretty I, cool. It's pretty cool. And as I said earlier, like it's not like we crossed the border into Indiana or Wisconsin here. We went to Hoover, Alabama. So there are a few technical glitches here. We're hoping to do this again tomorrow evening. And hopefully it's a little bit smoother during the second attempt. But we'll do our best to bring you this game as well and again like we said Tate Rowley on the mound we we'll go quickly around the diamond and go through the Potters starters defensively we got a battery of Tate Rowley and Braylon Smith Will Lehman's at third base Ethan Hurst at shortstop we've got Nolan Ryman at second base Tanner Spangler at first base in the outfield we've got AJ Davis in right Brandon Sieben in center field and Brooks Newhoff in left field And first batter for the Christian Academy of Knoxville is going to step to the plate. And he is Bennett Reimer. So Reimer. Exactly from you can see the Potters dugout again. The facilities here are spectacular turf fields. We always talk about the great Potters crowd, but I think it becomes all the more impressive when the crowd travels. Of you know, what was we we looked at the bus when we left, it was a nine hour and six. Illinois, but nonetheless, I mean, Potter's crowd has traveled a long way, but they're they're definitely representing here. Rolly. Things about Tate. You know, you see that a lot with relief pitchers, but as a starter, Tate is a stretch only. Pitcher. Well, on it, out and everything that he's doing. Uh, great field tiers we've already put out. 0 2 pitch will be on the way here in a second. Again, Tate is big. Any more that you. 
Well, Sam Cecil is coming to bat for the Christian Academy of Knoxville. Left-handed hitter. You can hear Coach Crawford instructing his outfield again to keep everything. So it's very obviously will be familiar with listening to us with the setup that they have there at Eastside, where you've got four fields kind of back to back, so a whole lot of netting preventing foul balls from getting over from other fields. Sometimes they still do, but he strikes out. First inning, no runs, no hits on base. Leave the Diamond to get ready to have their first at bats of the game, and they look pretty fired up as they walk toward the dugout. Great first inning there. Um, nothing more that we could really ask for, you know. We had our Potters dugout. Right over here, you know, you get, looks like you get big Baylor right there, ready to go, getting on board there. Potters are happy that it's sunshine, they're not playing in the snow, right coach? Well, I mean, I said it to one, one of the coaches from Alabama that from the Hoover We'd play. So the Alabama than what we've seen in Central Illinois so far this season. A little bit of a crowd shot right there where we're getting in. All right, we got everything going. We got the fields behind us. For those of you who were not able to make this wonderful trip provided to us, uh, thank you for everything that you do getting these guys down here. Definitely a once in a lifetime experience for some of these guys. So. to see what kind of it off to But we also had a couple other Illinois teams we ran into. Oak Forest is staying at the same hotel as the Potters. And then we've also got Belleville East down here as well. Oh. Seaman swings and misses. That'll be strike three. A and a little bit of an off-speed look. You know, we're seeing contrasting styles on the mound, obviously. You know, you look at Rowley pitching for the Potters and just bringing straight heat, it seems like. And then, obviously, you look here and you see the off-speed being twirled from Christian Academy of Knoxville. Okay. Braylon Smith swings and misses. So far, good two really good starts for both pitchers, right? You know, throwing a lot of strikes, hitting down in the zone, not giving the, either team's hitters that ability to get out here and get on to an early base runner. 0-1 to Braylon. 
that was just a bit outside. I think what we're discovering here from both the Tate and obviously we're seeing this inning is that the outside corner may not be called today. No, they look like to work pretty fast too. This, this individual for them's got like about a three-quarter release. That one is going to be a curveball strike. Broke broke into the zone. Yeah, that was a good pitch right there. I mean, I don't think there's anything really wrong with that. Okay, Ethan Hurst is going to be on deck for the Potters. One, two to Braylon. He'll swing and miss. So, so far today, we've had five batters and five strikeouts. I don't think that's the way anybody would have dreamed this up right now. But uh, we're getting it. So, Ethan Hurst coming to the plate. You can see Baylor Wilkinson on deck for the Potters. First pitch to Ethan is down low for ball. How much do you think, it, you know, from a catching standpoint, we saw in our two games today, right, that the turf affects that bounce, right? So I think like, it's significant. I mean, I think we had a couple balls where our catchers probably would have handled it pretty easily on dirt, and it was kind of just a surprise to them. But it wasn't even our team. You know, the other opponents had the same thing. Yeah, and Stern's I mean... inside out right there for that strike to Hurst. But it could be a factor at some point, right? We don't get a lot of games on turf for us. No, and I mean, I wonder... He'll be back a little bit. But, yeah, I mean, I think you make a good point. You could play all all day, every day out here. And I think it's kind of nice. I mean, you just look around and you see, you know, I'm a big fan of picturesque settings for baseball. And I really like the sort of picturesque setting that we have here in center and left center. Right field, right center. Looks like it's a construction zone. Um, again, the Hoover Metplex. Pretty spectacular facility is on its way to expansion. You can see as well out there. And so, obviously, that's going to be interesting to see what that traffic it's because they're obviously replacing it fairly regularly so I mean really really I, we can't say enough good things about the Hoover Medplex and what this place offers Potter's taking their infield warm-ups here as we get ready to start the top of the second inning early firing home so Tanner Spangler there first Ryman at second by the way, Coach, I'm looking at the Christian Academy in Knoxville. First base coach, he's running over here. I'm looking at their hats. You all like these hats. It's the, like the old school White Sox logo with the batter. And then the, the Christian Academy in Knoxville logo, the C-A-K, underneath it, just like it would be the batter and then the, the S-O-X for the Sox. Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Hopefully the White Sox get a, a big win tonight against, you know, everybody's least favorite team, the Astros. <laughs> Astros fans. I think that's an accurate statement. Downfall of my family is my brother in law is an Astros fan, so I just never heard the end of it. That is rough. <laughs> Although I can just go back to that 2005 World Series where they just got swept out. <laughs> There's that. That's my go to. <laughs> Rolly delivers. First pitch from Tony, a strike here in the second inning. Just like uh, last inning here. This is Jonathan Van Ness at the plate for Christian Academy in Knoxville. Yeah, definitely dialed in right there. Off speed. off speed, a little bit down. Didn't, didn't get that call, right? I think Braylon was looking for that, just didn't quite get there. But uh, I heard, heard, heard Coach Crawford immediately say that's not down as soon as that was there. So, again, thought that was probably in the zone, but it's called a ball. There's a swing and a miss for strike two. Interestingly enough, Christian Academy in Knoxville already has an action in their bullpen, but I don't know if this is just a kid who's throwing a bullpen. I mean, obviously their pitcher, three up, three down in the first, unless they have some plan to just utilize their entire staff today. And, I mean, they got solid, what, 40 dudes over there. That is true. 
as that one Van Ness fouls straight back. He had a good swing at that one. Um, yeah, I thought we had a lot of kids when we played that JV game where we, we took some, some of the juniors off of the varsity and combined with our sophomore squad. But uh, I would say it looks like there's about double the number of kids we had in that dugout over there. I think that's an accurate statement. One ball, two strikes right here. Nobody out. Top two. Rolly's going to deliver. Long hold. Tate delivers. And that one is called, I guess, a little bit off. 2-2. Two, two. It's a tough one, right? We just talked about how both pitchers for that first inning were on, 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 on. Getting, now we're slowing the game down just a little bit. Probably getting some of the subsidiary noise from the dugout, Potter's dugout. We're right next to it. Rolly will wind and deliver curveball. That one is hit foul past Tanner Spangler at first base. We do have a stationary camera, so it might be a little bit hard for us to get to the foul balls. I'm holding the one, so, but it also has all the scoreboard app and everything we have. I'm trying to use the coolest technology, but also the smallest space because we did have 40 plus people on a charter bus on the way down here. Now, let me Thanks tell again to all of our sponsors yes. who allowed us to get down here because that's amazing. Big thank you. Right here. here comes the pitch from Tate. He gets the signal, winds, delivers, strike three. Tate Woolley. Relaxed. I mean, we were, we were up nine to four at the seventh inning of the JV game, and I feel like. There is a strike here. Of not for them in this ballgame. Early will wind and deliver, and there is a strike right there. O2. Early. Long pause. You can see him take a deep breath and deliver. And that one is hit toward Will Lehman to third base, and Will makes the catch. Great, great catch right there by Will Lehman to get that out. So the other thing that might be worth noting, right, is so our first couple games here have been in, let's say, less than stellar weather in Illinois, let's say 40s. Yeah. Ish. Yeah. Cold. Might be a little bit of an adjustment period when you're going to play baseball games when it's 74 degrees, right? Yeah, 74 and sunny, I would say. I mean, a few. Could be an issue with Braylon a little bit. Yeah, a few clouds in the sky, but nothing, nothing significant. Nothing to complain about. Yeah. I mean, this is gorgeous. Rolly will deliver here, and that'll be another strike. In there. Tate will wind and deliver, and that's straight back. Yeah, that's a good one right there, though. Right, so now Tate's in control. 0-2, two out. Well, and again, you know, other than a little sinking liner that Will just made a play on, I mean, Christian County in Knoxville hasn't really honestly even been close to Tate, if we're being completely honest. Yeah. I mean, that's probably a good reason why he's, you know, Bradley picked him up last year and was really committed to building him out as a college baseball player. 0-2 to Hamilton will be on the way here in just a moment. Here it comes, and that one is hit. It's going to be out of play. Out of play. Well out of play right there, so we are good to go. And I'm going to state that I actually kind of bad, and I looked, I was a better off when I was down in the park. Coach, you've got to be perfect in these games. I know. <laughs> Again, as we said, we're going to be better. We're going to be better the second time around when we do this tomorrow night. We hope as well. But my, again, my only on. fear right here is battery life. Right, we're running this off of iPads and not the best Wi-Fi. Yes. I do have uh, one extra charger in my bag. I, I wish it was power outlets, Coach. Oh, we have that. That Ooh. one is grounded, and it'll go across. And we'll lay it. And they're going to say that that is safe for a race. Going to say that he beat that throw out. You know, hustled down the line really, really good right there. Just not enough to get it. So that's the other thing, you know, playing on turf, playing back, takes that extra hop sometimes. 
and hits our first hit of the ball game. Uh, only traveled about 85 feet, but it is, it is the first hit of the game. And so Christian Academy Knoxville has a run around here with two outs in the top of the second inning. This is Christian Rosa at the plate. And that one is a little bit down low. Rosa at third base for CAK this afternoon. We we're talking about the, you know, the pitchers having to adjust, you know, coming off the mound there. But even infielders, you know, the ball's going to play a little bit different and even taking hops that you might not be familiar with. Doesn't play like dirt, doesn't play like our grass infield, right? So No. I mean, you know, we play occasionally as their strike Usually in Illinois, we do get the all, all dirt infield that doesn't have the grass. Yeah. And then you get something, I mean, it's a little bit similar to this, but there's nothing really that replicates okay. turf, just the, the hey, way the ball bounces. It skips sometimes yeah. a bit too, and you hit a hard one. So. Control right here, one ball, one strike. It's going to deliver. Okay. Fouls that one out of play over our heads. In here, several people yelling heads up again. We mentioned it earlier, but basically, we got four fields that are essentially set up back to back to back of each other. Yeah. It's a very nice complex to say the least. I'm anxious to see tomorrow night the quality of the lighting. It's always one thing I'm curious about when you play night games. And it looks like there's a decent number of light standards as runner will go here. That one is into short right field. AJ Davis coming in and he will make the catch. And so the Potters dodge just a teeny bit of trouble in the top of the second inning. And Tate pitches around the infield single. The Potters will have their second crack at the hitting as they will come up to bat here in the bottom second. Yeah. Great inning right there. Potters faced a little bit of trouble, but got out of it pretty easily as we get that. Up for the Potters is going to be uh, number 99, Baylor Wilkinson. Yeah, yo, Will. And again, folks, we do, we will tell you once again, this is a brand new experience for us. Not only hitting the road to broadcast, but hitting the road to broadcast. Out in the lake and just with us, I mean, big, big uh, thumbs up, as we always say, to our MPTV crew and the people that do that when we broadcast basketball and baseball and football, Don Rodmaker, Blake Barnes, Jordan Neville. Jeff Stevens, all those people behind the scenes, and you know we Austin are Lions. Austin Lions. Like we are so lucky to have all the all those people, all the work that they do. And when sometimes when we're here by ourselves, it can be a little bit more challenging. Yeah, and we're using a little bit different technology, so we're using things that anybody can get off the street. So uh, I think our actual MPTV crew is either at a soccer game, and I think we have a home softball game as well. So best of luck to our lady fighters as they compete tonight. Right there. There's another guy who's kind of come out of the season on fire, right? Lots of those. Oh, slicing foul right down to the left field line. My right, big, big uh, thank you, by the way, to our Potters Athletic Director, Scott Jones, who just texted us. We know he's tuning in back from Morton, Illinois, watching those Lady Potters play softball. So thank you, Scott, for tuning in. That one is outside there. Baylor takes it. Obviously. Two balls, one strike right here. That uh, one is outside as well. By the way, this is Aaron Bobo on the mound for Christian Academy in Knoxville. And I mean, again, so far, I mean, really pretty impressive. Yeah, both teams, I mean, he's throwing strikes. I mean, both pitchers are here to win this game and keep their teams in it. Let's see the Potters get the bat on the ball a little bit. Baylor's just a little bit behind that one. Yeah, well, almost, almost the same exact thing, just a little bit behind. Falls it off over the third base dugout. Oh my God! One thing I know from Christian Baylor is that when he stays back in the ball and gets the kick, starts hitting opposite, like left center, left center, oh right center, right center. That's when Baylor's really good. Well. You know, he hits, he hits a good ball to left center. He almost guarantees next that bat he's going to get it hit. Here comes the 2 2. That one is going to be right up the middle of the first base. That's a winner on base. A leadoff man on base for the Potters here in the bottom of the second.
Oh, and Ryan Mitchell will be at the plate here. Hitting really well, and coaches just kind of progressively moved him up the batting order as the season has gone along this year. All right, Nolan steps to the plate. We are getting it. So one other thing we're hearing from people is that they could hear the dugout almost more than you could hear us. I, we're trying. We're right next. We're literally right next to the dugout. The picture that was reported as being "quote unquote" good. So yeah. that's positive. I'm now holding the mic as close to my mouth as I can get it. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. As no one will round that one toward first base. Step on first is Tyler Bennett. He and goes second. Baylor's tagged out. It's a double play recorded by Christian Academy in Knoxville. Tay Rowley stepping the plate. Two outs, nobody on. Trying to do a little damage and help himself. I think we're pretty much lock, locked in on this location today. We may uh, we may change our location tomorrow e evening. Just try to change up different spots, see what else we can do out here. Yep, we're doing the best we can. And if nothing else, just put us on mute and watch this beautiful game. That's right. Coach Myers is doing a great job with the scoreboard, so you actually know what's happening. I mean, you know, one of the things that always would bother me is when I would turn into, tune into high school games and they wouldn't use the scoreboard feature. And, you know, NFHS, you know, even if the pick slot camera, you should be able to get a scoreboard shot, but some schools don't do that, and then I'm just guessing. What's the score? It depends on their setup, as always. Right. <laughs> Throw that one out right there. I don't want to pick on anybody in particular, so I won't, but tell you that I've seen it I've seen it at a few places, even in the middle line. 3-0 right here to Rolly. And there's strike 3-1. Here comes the wind and the pitch. Tate grounds that one up the middle. Second baseman up with it over to first, and Tate is retired just by a step and a half. Nice play. Defenses have been good so far today. Pitchers have been good so far today. Still looking to find a little bit of offense through two innings. We'll get there, though, as we go to the top of the third. Sometimes it just takes a little bit to get it going. You know, this is a varsity baseball game, right? There's a lot of good teams down here, so sometimes it might just take a little bit to get going uh, as we... Work through, get a quick shot of the dugout right here. Well, rem getting. Remind everybody that might be watching, just tuning in, that the scoreboard, the Potters are the home team. We do have the Potters on top for the scoreboard. Yeah. But that, work through that issue. Again, this is a brand new experience for us, and we're going to get better each time we do this. We learn. We're teachers. We teach people to learn. We'll figure it out. I know our. Uh, I know that Don Sturm, one of our technology integration specialists at the lovely Morton High School, mentioned that he was going to try to tune in to see how everything was working. Appreciate Don's help in getting a Switcher Studio downloaded yeah. on our iPads. Uh, this is actually the second time we watched Switcher Studio. We did it a couple years ago. Remember for the IESA Potters State Championship game. That's right. So we used it as that as well because we had numerous MPTV events going on. So for those of you curious, I mean, here's what the Potter schedule looks like. Right, so we played these two JV games this morning uh, versus Briarwood and Hoover's JV. Interesting game versus the Hoover JV, but we walked away with the win there. And we're currently playing Christian Academy in Knoxville. Coming back tomorrow, JV game, 9 a.m. versus Vestavia Hills. And then uh, wait all day, Varsity versus Spain Park under the lights. So that should be a good one. And both uh, Vestavia Hills and Spain Park, both relatively local schools. I mean, they're generally around, like, you know, within the... Well, Spain Park is literally just basically right in Hoover, and then Vestavia Hills, you know, just a little bit outside. So we're going to play some of the local schools, which we obviously did with playing Hoover in the JV game, and I kind of appreciate that. It's also kind of fun to play some schools from all over the place. Like, we have Christian Academy in Knoxville here, which obviously totally, totally different experience. Playing a team out of Tennessee, something obviously we haven't seen much. So another fun thing, there's some teams down here who's got some alternative names, right? So if you're out there on Twitter right now, Potter's Twitter, you should tag at Potter's Baseball or maybe even reply to this stream that we put up there. Uh, not on YouTube, but under Potter's Baseball at Twitter. What should the Morton Potter's alternative name be? <laughs> we were having some conversations before, you know, should it be the Midwest or 
you know, not Chicago. What should we be called as our alternative name? So that could always be a fun one. So we'll check back in on that Twitter uh, out there. But remember, just take out Potter's Baseball. What's our alternative name? Our, our JV players wanted jerseys that said the North the after North. after we played Hoover. And it, it certainly not. It did seem like the Hoover team was kind of surprised that this team from Illinois came out swinging as well as we did. We swung the bat well for two games in a row. Took us a minute to get started uh, in, that, in that first game, but once we got through that order the second time, you know, Ollie duly noted we got in last night about 1 a.m. They probably went to bed 2.30 or 3 and then having to get up this morning to get breakfast and get out here. High school kids aren't used to that. No, that is a new experience for them. And, again, that 9 a.m. game tomorrow, always we kind of, we, we've talked about it before on some basketball broadcasts like the 9 a.m. game at the Pekin Holiday Tournament. Mm-hmm. It's kind of that, that want-to game, right? Whoever kind of wants to be there more tends to win that 9 a.m. game. I think that's a very accurate statement for 14 to 18-year-olds. It's where they don't play pro games at 9 a.m. That is true. <laughs> Good pitch right there from Tate Roller. Tate working ahead once again. It looked like he maybe took a little off that, maybe like a little off speed, not quite his normal fastball. Top of third here, Tate has retired six of the seven hitters that he's faced. Gave up an infield single, but no harm was really done there. Yeah, we're doing good right now. And strike three. Tate Rowley continues to be locked in. We're definitely killing it. So lots of positive comments I'm hearing. I'm especially happy to say that uh, that Coach, older Coach Lindley, my father is is listening and watching us, and he is uh, enjoying the broadcast. And you know, we appreciate all of his work. He'll be back with us, of course, on the field when we return to Illinois. I, mean, I always joke he doesn't leave the Peoria area, and I think Alabama is a little bit outside of the Peoria area. It would have been fun to have Coach Coach Lindley down here. <laughs> I'm sure, he'd have some great sayings for us. That is true. <laughs> First pitch, there was a ball. There was a ball, and then we'll get back on Monday. Potter's going to take on Canton. First middle line conference opener right there. We'll be on spring break as well. Yeah, we appreciate also, I should probably mention, uh, the Morton School District 709 that let us get these kids out of school and come down here. And we're going to miss a couple days of school, and we are able to do this. So big thank you to the District 709 administration as well. For sure. Thank you, Miss Deidre Ripka, Mr. Scott Jones, all of those people. Because I'm sure they would rather be here right now. That is true. I mean, I mean, and I don't know if they know what they're missing. I guess if they tuned in here, they could see what they're missing. But because it is awfully nice. I mean, again, currently light breeze and 75 degrees. I'll take it. I mean, I'm I thought it was pretty nice in Central Illinois today, like 65 and sunny. There is a chance of snow, I think, tomorrow in Central Illinois, though. So, bunt, and that's a strike as he pulls back two and two now. Yeah, good pitch right there. See Will Lehman charging hard right there, playing at third base. You see that in your camera view. So that was a positive. The other thing, folks, you might be hearing is not only our dugout, but these fields are pretty close together, and the field behind us seems very excited. That's strike three right there, and the Potters crowd gets excited there as Tate Rowley gets another punch out, but I don't want to turn around and miss anything, but whatever was going on behind us was very exciting a few minutes ago. Lots of games happening out here. The Metplex. You can see all our Potters fans over here who made the trip down. Thanking all to our families that are helping support these guys. So we bring it out here, Tate Rowley. Bring it. Back to the top of the order here with Bennett Reimer for Christian Academy. Swing and a miss. He struck out his first time. So do you think the heat helps or hurts players, right? I mean, standpoint? from a pitching standpoint, I mean, you made a good point earlier during our game. Like, I mean, you're going to have some stamina issues, especially the first time you pitch in the heat. But I do think it loosens you up a little bit. Especially as you get a little bit longer into the game, right? Yeah, I mean, and I feel like I think people underrate how hard it is to grip the ball when it's cold. I mean, everybody talks about how hard it is to hit when it's cold. But, I mean, I remember trying to pitch in the cold, and you just couldn't get a grip on a ball. You'd be almost like a fastball-only pitcher because your curveball just wouldn't do anything. I think we've already seen that this year, too. Good pitch. Reimer to Reinman, and Nolan Reinman retires Bennett Reimer. And we are through two and a half innings here. Tate Rowley only allowing one hit through three. Great catch right there by Ryman. As the inning gets Rolly out of that jam. Good things happening here. We haven't had some little potters make it. Let's see. uh, Yeah, look at that. Peter Spangler's little brother over there. Aaron Bobo walking back to the mound for the Christian Academy of Knoxville. Potter's going to have Brooks Newhoff try to get us started here in the bottom of third. 
So if you're Brooks right here, right? What are you thinking? Right? You've seen, you know, your potters not have a ton of success against Bobo at all. So what do you think? Do you alter your approach at all? Or you just go up and do you that first time? Off? I mean, I am going to look for his pitch fastball because I think what we're discovering here is when he gets ahead, he's got a pretty nice little breaker and that he can get you off balance. Now, I mean, granted, if you don't get that first pitch fastball and you end up chasing some, if he goes first pitch curveball and gets you out of balance, gets you off, I mean, there is that issue. But I'm tempted to say if I can get a first pitch fastball, I'm swinging, trying to do some damage. I think it's a good idea. I mean, we saw a lot of first pitch fastballs today. I mean, I think we actually saw more than we would have thought. I mean, they were sitting on it. We had some good, I think we saw some pretty decent pitching today. I don't think it was the best pitching we've ever seen, but I think it was pretty good. And this is from Bobo. It's it impressive so far. Yeah, I think really good command. Right? Yeah, I mean, I feel like we saw a couple different types of pitchers in that in that first in that JV game. We saw kind of more of the traditional soft toss and lefty, and you know we did okay. His biggest he he help, he didn't help himself with some some walks, and then his catcher didn't help himself with some you know pass balls and such. Then in the the sophomore game against Hoover, thought the first kid was a decent had decent velocity. Um, you know, we did a pretty good job against him. The second guy came in and kind of was was a little unique, kind of straight over the top type delivery, and that was a little bit more challenging for us. It felt like he had a very, like you said, a very unique delivery, all arm. Bobo did go first pitch fastball. Brooks had a good swing at it, but unfortunately, he's swinging a miss. He was in that. I mean, he kind of had that mindset. If it was first pitch fastball down the middle, he's going to go. Bobo's got almost like this three quarter sidearm release too, which is a little different. There's the breaker. I mean, that's the dangerous thing. It seems like when he get when he gets ahead of you, the off speed is coming. So you want to make sure if you get that first pitch pass ball, you gear up. That one's a little bit low. One and two now, Brooks. Laid off that one pretty good, right? That one made it about 55-ish feet. Bobo winds and delivers. Newhoff fouls that one off. Yeah, protecting that at bat right there. He got on his front foot, Brooks did, and then he's like, well, I'm going to foul this one off. Keep my at bat alive, which is a big deal. I just need a base runner here, right? We just need to get somebody. We had Baylor on, uh, just hit that double play, but get somebody on, nobody out, do some damage. Brooks is hit by a pitch. That'll work. Here we go. And Brooks offers a little bit of speed on the bases. I don't know if Powders will be super aggressive yet, but opportunity for maybe him to get going and try to steal second base, perhaps. Yeah, Brooks looks fine. It's going to bring Tanner Spangler to plate, and A.J. Davis is going to be uh, in the hole after that. We were just talking, though. Sometimes the little things, right? Just getting a guy on base, nobody out. It's going to get an opportunity to move him over. A little bit of speed, too. Brooks isn't a slow guy. It'll be interesting to see. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily do it right away, but I'm going to see if Coach puts him in motion. Oh. Tanner Spangler grounds one through the hole between first and second. Brooks will use that speed to go first to third, and Potters, oh, Brooks is going to be close. He is going to be called safe. Big hit right there by Tanner Spangler. Potters got some life now, bringing it to here's the Potter dugout right to the right of us here. Great hustle first to third on that as well. A.J. Davis hitting in the ninth spot today for the Potters as the right fielder. A.J. steps to the plate trying to do some damage. Potters have a chance to break out on top and score here in the bottom of the third. A.J. follows that one back. Sit on that first pitch fastball again, right? Yeah, I like it. That was good right there. Hit's going to score a run just about anywhere you can put it. I mean, even a, a good ground ball should still get the Potters a run. Bobo winds, delivers off speed a little bit down low, one and one. It's a good one for AJ to lay off right there. Tanner not looking real aggressive over here at first base, you know, so. Here comes the one one. AJ follows that one toward the dugout. Dugouts are fully fenced in here, though, so no dangers. Yeah, lots of fencing, lots of netting all over all over we got. Fencing, netting, big at bat right here for A.J. Davis. A 1-2 delivery to Davis. Grounded toward third base, fair territory. Throw to the plate. Brooks is going to be out there. And so first out of the inning, Potter still with runners at first and second, but cannot find a way onto that scoreboard for either team so far through our first 
two plus innings. It's a tough one, right? And that's one of those judgment calls, right? What are you going to do? And Brooks is already, you know, with the pitch going home, right to the third, hard hit ball, right to third baseman. He just got to do something, right? It's either you got to pause and go back as quick as you can, almost like flopping, or you got to charge hard and hope that they make a bad play. And just... I will say I did like the third baseman's play there. I mean, he made a really good play to get that ball and to kind of reorient himself and throw home. So credit to him, a good play. See, been hit by a pitch. That'll bring Braylon Smith to the plate with the bases loaded. So if you're the Potters, this is probably about pretty close to your dream scenario, right? One out right here. Threatening it. The bottom three. Big, strong hitter up. Two, three, four. A couple opportunities to get this in, especially with the left here right here. Well, and Braylon, I mean, if we go back to last year, has had one of the had one of the more spectacular power years that we've seen in Central Illinois in a while. I mean, he was just hitting home runs left and right, including a huge home run in the regional championship game over East Peoria. Looks like we've got about three. 30 down the line. Braylon will follow that one straight back. Let's say 330 down the line, 400 to straightaway center. These fields are cookie cutters of each other on every field at this complex. Yeah. It's a nice place to play, though. Um, 01 delivery. Braylon swings and misses 0 and 2. Yeah, one of the other interesting things is, and if you don't know, you can kind of see it out there, folks, but they also have extra backstops. So you could play either like softball or youth games here as well, like multiple and multiple games yeah, going on. on the field. Yeah. Braylon will swing and miss. Strike three. So base is loaded, but now two outs as Ethan Hurst steps to the plate. Missed opportunity, right? All right. So we need to get at least one person to get ahead of us. You really don't want to leave the bases loaded. So it's up to Hurst right here. Going in. Didn't have a great first bat, right? Uh, he struck out, so that was kind of a downer. He's he has been he's been hitting well this season. I would agree. It's just one of those things right right here is where we need this, you know, bloop over left field or the easy push to the right side. Right over the second baseman. Or still take that one. It'll be called a strike. The biggest gap, I think, is in right center right now. I would agree. Left field line a little bit, too, maybe. There's a couple if we can get one, right? you got to figure AJ's got pretty decent speed. That one is fouled back. It's another 0-2 right here for the Potters. So, Chris Academy, it's kind of hard to see kind of through the fence there, but they're playing pretty much straight away. Maybe shading just a little bit to the right, but nothing major. Bobo Wines delivers. Hurst grounds that one toward shortstop, and they'll flip to second for the easy out. So Christian Academy in Knoxville, Aaron Bobo pitches out of trouble. We have no score after three full innings of play. Oh, crazy right there. Missed opportunities, I'm sure. Coach Crawford's not super happy about that one. Just a couple missed as he picks up the bat right there in front of us. Well, one question that you got to start to ask is, I mean, it's, you feel like Ethan, excuse me, you feel like Tate Rowley hasn't had any trouble whatsoever, but it's kind of an odd thing. He's got so many strikeouts, his pitch count is actually climbing. Yeah, it, and it takes some time. I mean, we're in the fourth, so you just want to make sure that we keep that in mind because it is hot. I mean, he's thrown one game, so, right? Yeah, and it, it's just kind of one of those weird things, right? You never want to tell your pitcher not to strike people out, but when you're working on early season, when you're working on pitch counts, you start to start to sort of think about the fact that every strikeout is a few extra pitches. You'd love a couple first pitch flyouts or something That'd like that. Great. One pitchers. Uh, speaking of awesome things, you know we have the MPTV Coaches Show that dropped this morning at like 6:30 a.m. Uh, magically, thanks to the power of YouTube and scheduling. Uh, this week was a good one, right? You got to sit down with some people? Yeah, state champs, our, our girls, 4x800 meter state champion relay team. I mean, anytime you can take home a state championship, that's pretty special. So congratulations to those girls for taking home that state championship, and it was fun to get to hear a little bit about that. Yeah, so if you got time, head over to YouTube to, uh, at Morton Potter TV. Check out that, actually, on the same channel that you're watching uh, this one for and see what those girls had to say. They're not the most talkative bunch, but they sure do like to work and they work really hard uh, for that. So hopefully that success in the indoor realm carries over to outs outside as well. Yeah, and I mean, I know I've 
talked a little bit with Coach Zeller. I mean, he certainly is optimistic that that will carry over. He mentioned also that Kerrigan Vandal didn't run, and she was somebody that could be on that relay team, and obviously somebody with a ton of speed and athleticism. If you happen to watch any of our MPTV basketball broadcasts and saw her out there. So, I mean, a lot of optimism for Potter's track. Correct. As always, if you can ever get out to any Potter's athletics, whether it be softball, uh, girls soccer, track and field, boys tennis, go out. Boys tennis had some big matches, won them over the weekend, so uh, great things happening. And if you want to go back into the MPTV archives, you can watch our coaches show from a couple weeks ago, our interview with a couple of our Potter's tennis players, Blake Shoemaker and MJ Kaufman. So again, like, no worries, folks. You don't have to watch, I mean, we'd love you to watch them every week, but if you, you know, something you want to sparks your interest, you want to yeah. 11 hour drive to Alabama? <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe just watch them all. <laughs> That's right. But be sure to subscribe so you're always noting when we get those. Rolly is a bit down on that one. one. He almost tried to overthrow that ball, right? He's cupping it. He wanted it. He wanted to go 0-2, but 1-1. One, one. So in our sophomore game, our pitcher, Miles Lehman, our starting pitcher, went four innings and was pretty solid. I mean, really, only one run allowed through four. It was, it was excellent, to be honest. But you saw him beginning to... His, you saw him beginning to tire a little bit in the fourth, and it wasn't, again, I didn't feel like it was anything that was was the result of anything he was doing so much as like we've brought up, just different conditions. You're going to become more, maybe more tired when you're pitching in the heat for the first time of the year. I mean, going from 40 to 80, I mean, almost literally overnight, so it takes time to build that stamina. That one is a bit low, two and two now. That was a good pitch, though. Try to get him out on his front foot just a little bit. Maybe hit a weak ground ball back to the pitcher or hit off to the right side. And Good discipline there. Well, we've been talking about the fact that obviously we don't want Tate's pitch count to pile up. So it would be great to finish the hitter here. And unfortunately, it's a bit low, so we will go full. Yep. Full count here. Nobody out. Top four. Potter's strained three guys last inning, which was kind of a downfall. Right there, you know, we talk a lot about left on base. Can't miss those opportunities, even if you just get one. You know, one is better than none, especially at the varsity level. You could have a lot of close games. Well, you also tend to think Tate is a guy that can win you a game one to nothing. I mean, and I'm not necessarily saying he's going to pitch the full game, as that one is shot into left field. Newhoff back. That's going to get over his head and bounce over the fence for a ground rule double. Yeah, that ball was rocketed uh, off the bat of that right there. That's a tough one. Um, and then you can see the power of the turf right there. If we're playing on grass, that's going to be a one hopper off the fence. Still going to be a double either way, but uh, that's a shot. He's got to get that one out of his head, though, right? That was just a fastball over the plate. Made a good play. Well, you start to think about it. I mean, you know, it was it was three two. He had a chance to put him away. Unfortunately, didn't on the two two pitch, and then had to come back with three two. Didn't want to walk him, so he puts one kind of over the middle of the plate. And like you said, the end result, ground rule double. Well, and as we talk about all the time, right? We tell our pitchers they can't strike out everybody. It's just not possible. So you just got to get to win that matchup. So Bunt right back to Tate. Nobody really covering third, so Tate will go to first. Tanner's there for the out. So a good runner on third, one out. The issue now is that Tate kind of does need that strikeout or pop-up because yep. he needs to do what Aaron Bobo did to the Potters and strand this guy in third base. you got to keep him there the whole entire time, so he's got to be on. I think he knows that, right? He's taking a little bit extra time here. This is Jonathan Van Ness. He's the designated hitter. You say the Warriors. This guy looks like he's got a pretty decent approach right here. Van Ness designated hitter for Christian Academy of Knoxville. A lot of different teams. You know, what, 25, 26 different teams from all over the south. Swing and a miss, strike one. This is probably the south, right? Yeah, like we said, a couple Illinois teams besides us. I mean, you know, and just kind of interesting to see. I mean, just see so many different teams. And we were we were talking about it earlier, uniforms. I'm just one thing I've kind of enjoyed seeing is all the different uniforms yeah, that people cool. are wearing. It's definitely one of Coach Crawford's favorite things to. Potters are getting folks. If you are a uniform fan, I am as well. Uh, Potters, uh, it's in. It, the order is out to try to get some powder blue jerseys. Just to go a little bit different feel for the Potters. Sometimes I feel like you got to mix it up. And now I think in you know in 2023, custom jerseys are like all the rage. Pretty easy to get. Sometimes they might take like you know four to six weeks, but. Oh, that one is strike three. Umpire wanted to uh, enjoy the drama as well. Took a second to call it, call Van Ness out, but he does. So two outs, runner still at third base. Yeah, uh, definitely went for the drama there. That's not something you'd see in high school baseball very often. Uh, but I guess if you are going to get that opportunity to get that big strikeout call, 
When you're getting paid, you might as well go for it. Go for broke. This is John Hamilton now at the plate. So Hamilton is the guy that Christian Academy Knoxville is going to try to rely on to come up with a big two-out hit. And his first approach is a foul ball over the third base dugout. What's your preferred lefty-on-lefty -lefty approach right here? I would drop curveballs in. I That's mean, what I would think too. I just feel like it's really hard for lefty to hit a lefty's curveball. And they don't get a lot. It's not something you get a lot of practice in. And if you can spin your curveball right over the plate, it's just deceptive. That one is a little, a little bit, bit down better. low. I would agree. So former left-handed pitcher, like that was my favorite thing. And if you can even vary your speed a little bit to go to more like a slider and a curveball, it'll really mess them up. Tate's attacked with the fastball. Here comes the pitch. That one is a swing and a miss. One and two now. So now he's ahead. Now he's in control. Potter's giving a little bit of depth in the outfield, too. Yeah, you feel like this is going opposite field if he makes contact. I feel like you're right. Steven's giving him a couple steps in center. Here comes the one, two. That one is down low. Braylon Smith, nice job blocking that one. Yeah, good stop right there. Backstops are a ways away here at the Met. So, I mean, we got a little bit of room back here behind the catcher. Tate Rowley sets, checks the runner, delivers the 2-2 pitch, strike three. So now both pitchers have pitched out of trouble, and we are through three and a half innings. We're still tied 0-0. Yeah, Coach Crawford liked that one, right? That's what you want your big senior coming up. Potter's number one right there, shutting it down. You're gonna have Baylor Wilkinson lead it off for the Potters here. It's a big thing. Potter's dugout is fired up about that. It's always good to work out of those jams. One thing to think about here is if Baylor gets on, I mean, are you gonna run for him? I mean, you're only in the fourth inning, but you feel like any run is precious the way these two pitchers are going at it. I think that's probably a pretty smart idea. I mean, last time we got doubled up right there. Probably not anybody would have, I think just about everybody would have got doubled up in that situation, unless they were moving on the pitch. But uh, still pretty good. So let's see if we can get number 90 man, a big hit here. I gotta, down the line, right? I gotta also tell you that how much I like the Potter's jersey numbers that Coach Crawford just tends to buy these random numbers. Like we have obviously a number 99 on both teams. We have a number 60 on both teams. Uh, we had number seven. Noah Suttles wearing number 71 today for the JV game. So I'm just kind of always amusing to see when, Co when Coach goes and purchases jerseys what non-traditional numbers he's gonna purchase. Yeah, I mean, what do you do? Like one through ten, and then like do. Pit, spin a wheel. What <laughs> number does this land on? Put it in Excel. You need equals random. I do. So what number we get? <laughs> I would say well, I've never asked him that. Well, I do know. I do know the number seventy-one story. There's a when when he took his son. When Cameron is a freshman now, but when Cam was a little guy, he took Coach Crawford took Cam to a Cardinals game, and there was a Cardinals relief pitcher whose name I completely forget, who didn't stick around long, quite honestly, but was number seventy-one and called Cam out of the stands to play catch. Well, there you go. And so that's why he purchased the number seventy-one jersey. Baylor phase fouls off that first pitch fastball out of play. It's a cool story. I mean, opening day for Major League Baseball today, right? Yeah. Cardinals in action, Cubs in action, White Sox. Be a good day. Absolutely. Everybody loves when baseball comes back. Baylor falls that one off. It's he's down. He's down 0 and two. But I'll tell you what, this is pretty much the same exact at bat Baylor had last time. He found his way on base. I don't think Baylor's scared to swing the bat. I think he's always got. He goes in. He's got a purpose. He knows his job on this team is to get on base. Like he can swing that stick. Uh, pretty well. He's right on this, too. And again, we're starting to see the juniors have an impact in this lineup with Baylor in, in the four hole and Nolan Ryman in the five hole. You know, like obviously a lot of great seniors on this roster, but you see these juniors stepping up, and this is that's how, I mean, if the Potters are aspirational of making a deep run in the postseason, it's got to be the young guys that are big contributors. That was a good curveball right there. Failed that one off inside. Yeah. You guys see Baylor, he's like, ooh, I saved myself right there. But, you know, you think about who they graduated last year, Bo Durbin, Tom, Thomas Kruger, people, Mac Anderson. Mac Anderson, like people like that. Yeah, I mean, they were huge pieces of this. So you got to have these juniors like Baylor and Nolan step up. Got to fill the lineup. That one is just a bit outside, two and two now. I think everybody here in the Potters fandom just took a collective deep breath. Uh, that was a really good pitch right there. That's, as a pitcher, when you say, ooh, you just want to bait him into something. 2-2 two, two on the way. That one is to center field. It'll hit the ground out of bounds. And Baylor is on base. He's two for two today. And a 
think we are going to see that pinch runner. It's going to be Noah Suttles. Noah Suttles is going to come out and pitch for. Noah Suttles wearing the more traditional number 12 in the varsity game. The good news about Coach Crawford liking jerseys is we have a lot of jerseys to choose from. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and we try to take care of them, right? So that way they last a long time and gives lots of options. Well, that's exactly right. Nolan Ryman at the plate. We do have the unfair advantage in broadcasting of knowing the signs, <laughs> but I but I didn't get a chance to look at Coach to see if he gave Nolan a bunt. I did, and I think you're 99% correct. <laughs> Unless I... Aaron oh, Bobo. Wasn't thrown out over yet either. Nolan will pull back in the bunt, oh. and they're going to say that that one, unfortunately, is fouled off. And Nolan, that there's an opportunity for a moment. I thought that that was going to be a pass ball, but that was only because I was screened by Tate taking his warm-up swing. Yep, that's a tough one, right? Looks like he tried to pull it back. It's just when the ball's coming in there, you know, mid 80s. It's going to be tough. Subtles back safely at first base. This would almost, I mean, Nolan's a pretty good contact guy. This wouldn't be a bad hit and run time, but Coach Wright and I were talking about the fact that as a program, we need to work more on hit and runs. It's hard, right? Because then you're, you're definitely sacrificing that runner if they don't get it. Yeah. And I just feel like, I mean, it's probably a good practice activity for us, but none of us have probably practiced it enough to dial it up here just out of the blue. Yeah, because the batter's got to put the bat on the ball. And the, but the other thing is you're really dependent on the pitcher. Although Bubba's shown really good control today within these past couple pitches. So that would have been a good one right there. That one misses two and one. I mean, settles out there testing a little bit too. Yeah, they're thinking. I mean, like again, they, there's probably some thought that Noah might run here. I don't think the Potters will do it with nobody out though. Yeah, catcher's got a pretty decent arm too, from what we've seen from throwdowns. You know, we are playing varsity level, so guys can do it. Another pickoff throw. Settles even saw a little left room for another step right there, so. Aaron Bobo delivers the 2-1 to Nolan Reinman. That one is fouled right almost by us. Take it really ducks real quick. Tate's wearing the number 35. One of my favorite players of all time is Frank Thomas. That's right. It's my son's number too. So big positive things right there. 2-2 two, two on the way. That one is grounded foul. Again, no one have a good at bat. It's interesting, you know, Tate changed his number. A couple guys changed their numbers from last year to this year. Maybe that should be a coach's show. Maybe we should get why did you change your number? I think it's always an interesting discussion with guys. You know, why did you end up with the number that you have? Why did you pick it? Or if you sometimes you know you're assigned a number, then you have a great year and you decide to keep it. That one is a bit tall, bit up. Three two now. This is a time when Coach might put Noah in motion here, 3-2. Yeah, full count. Nobody out, though. Assume there's going to be some action. Even if no one swings and misses, it's tougher to, to throw somebody out on a swing and a miss. That one is going to be – he's going to be – they're going to call it a foul ball. I think it hit the knob of the bat. I'm thinking that hit the knob. We've had a couple inter We've had a couple interesting uh, plays with balls hitting near people's hands on the bat today. It has been. We had two in one game. You know, for those who don't know, the hand is part of the bat. Oh, we're out of baseballs, apparently. Getting some new baseballs. Baseballs are a hot commodity. They are. I mean, you know, you look at the price of a baseball, or a box of baseball. I don't know what the yeah. price of an individual baseball is, but when you're looking at... Divided by 12. Yeah, 80, I guess that would be it. 80 plus dollars yeah. a box. So we don't teach math, right? <laughs> yeah. I teach business, and it's going up because of inflation. <laughs> Standard, standard answer right there. It seems fair, but yeah, you look at almost $80 plus dollars a box for a dozen baseballs. I mean, it adds up real fast. Yeah, I mean, I think you're probably going through at least six, maybe ten this game. I mean, they get scuffed up pretty quick. No one's hanging tough right here. Yeah, no one's having a great at-bat. Making Bobo throw some more pitches, too. You know, anytime you're facing a good pitcher, the more pitches you can get them to throw, it always helps them out. We've been talking, you know, about a lot of. We've hit a lot of topics during this at bat. That means it's a good quality long at bat. What else? What else you gotta, What else should we talk about? Oh. Well, that oh. is a ground ball toward first. It'll almost function as a sacrifice bunt. If you remember, that was about an eight minute at bat in total time. But if you remember when that at bat started, no one was initially going to bunt him over yep. for a sacrifice bunt. That's basically almost where we ended up, even though it doesn't go down as a sacrifice in the book. Yeah, I would agree. But a great piece of hitting right there, you know. 
he knew he made the mistake, you know, the first time. Tough when you don't get the pitch, you need to bunt, but uh, battled through the whole entire thing. Maybe we'll go through it, probably, what, nine pitches or so? Yeah, maybe more than that, honestly. Think about, you know, a 3-2 count plus three or four foul balls, so nine or ten, plus the one in play. Rowley grounds one up the middle, fielded at second base, over to first. That does get Suttles to third, but now we got two outs. Brooks Newhoff step into the plate with opportunity, though, to put the Potters in front. Yep, Brooks got on, let off the inning. Uh, Two and easy out. Was that last inning? It's already last inning. Last inning was hit by pitch. Yeah. Started this off right there with that hit by pitch. Bobo delivers. That one is down low. I mean, Braylon did a great job when they hit a runner on third. This is the high-pressure situation if you're the catcher, right? You know, 0-0 game. You're into the second half of the game now. Any ball that sneaks by you, suddenly it's a one nothing game. As we talked about earlier, these backstops are a ways away. That one is up high, 2-0 and out of Brooks. Brooks laid off that one, right? High fastball, though, sometimes is your hitter. That's the one you can barrel up. It's like, ooh, this is tempting. This is like waist chest high. I can put this one over the spin turf sign out there. 2-0 on the way. That one almost hit Brooks, 3-0. Tanner Spangler on deck. He singled his first at-bat. I'm sure, you know, get right here. This would be a, another interesting first and third situation. Two outs. Maybe you got speed. Strike right down the middle, but I think Brooks was taken all the way on the 3-0 pitch. Yeah, for sure. If he gets that same one again, he's going to be ready to hit it. I don't know if they got the same rule that we do, but until you hit a dinger, you're taking on 3 <laughs> <laughs> Brooks will walk on that one as it's a bit low, so Spangler at the plate. Again, Spangler one for one today, single last inning. We're going to get a mound visit right here, too. And you mentioned, you know, speed on the bases here in that first and third situation. I mean, this may be as much a discussion of be prepared for something with first and third or what do we want to do with first and third as it is any sort of discussion in terms of pitching mechanics or anything like that. Yeah, because they don't even have anybody up in the pen for them. they got some guys doing the J-bands over there, but not a lot. Just trying to, you know, calm them down a little bit. Got himself in a couple of jams the past two innings, right? Sometimes, as a, you know, a coach, you just want to go out and say, hey, you just need a woosa this. Deep breath, relax, you got the stuff. Well, and I will tell you, I mean, I think that's that's a skill that you develop as a coach. I mean, you did a good job, I thought, today in our game going out there a couple times. You know, that, that I'll self-admit, sometimes that's not my strength is, the, you know, the, the non-strategy visit, like, you know, where you're just going out there to kind of talk to somebody. You know, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like when I get out there, I, I like, please throw a strike. I don't know. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. Uh, and I, yeah, sometimes it's like good cop, bad cop. You got to do it. So yeah. coaching freshman, I got Coach Cali with me. Sometimes he's the good cop. I let him dick a lot of those non-visits. Sometimes you're just so flustered as a coach, like just throw the strikes, <laughs> right? Catcher jumps out of the chute looking for something, but Potters don't have anything on here. That was strike one. Yeah, almost took, I mean, kind of a hard situation, right? The umpire calls that one a strike, but he caught the ball. Like almost on home plate. Yeah, I felt like he almost took a strike away from his pitcher, but the umpire did call it. But second one is almost the same exact spot. That's strike. So oh, and you, two. So kind of when you make those nine visits, like, hey, just get this guy. Uh, we get a good offense behind you. Okay. Well, let's see what happens here with two strikes. If coach does put Brooks in motion, maybe try to steal a run here. He does not go. Pitch is low. One and two. This is one of those where if you wanted to be kind of, again, literally try to steal a run, have Brooks run three quarters of the way to second base and then throw on the brakes and see if you can just steal one here. And then you think about it, you wouldn't be in a bat. It's worst case scenario, right? You've got good at bats coming up too. Potters have a really stacked lineup, top to bottom. One, two, that one is down, two and two. Good patience right there by Tanner, right? Got behind early, it's like two balls come back. Yeah, it gets, gets it back to an even count now. Got to figure right here, you're going to get a fastball. Probably going to be over the plate. Could just set up just a little bit outside for those of you who can't see at home. Fouled straight back there. Again, Tanner having a good at bat. Anytime you can make that pitcher throw pitches and think, I think those are great at bats, especially in a close game like this. You know what? Bottom four. I don't know what his pitch count is. Yeah, we've talked a lot about Tate's pitch count, but I don't think Bobo has thrown a limited pitch count. I mean, he's thrown plenty of pitches as well. Probably just as many. Some long at bats. Tanner follows that one back. That's headed toward the field that is immediately behind us. It's 
71. So the benefit of sitting next to the putter's dugout <laughs> is the guy who's doing the game changer just said that he's throwing 71 pitches. So that's getting up there. Although that one is down low, three and two. So Brooks is going to get a running start now. And the other thing, though, just real quick here is these guys have been playing baseball since pretty much January 1. Yeah. So the team we played today had like 20 games. <laughs> so we're we're new to this. So they, they can, their guys can go a lot longer than us. Here comes the full count pitch. Tanner swings and misses, strike three. And so we are still scoreless through four innings. But you do make a good point on the games. I mean, we were playing that Hoover JV team, and they ran some pickoffs on us. And, you know, one of our players asked them how many games they had. They won their 26th game. We, we were on our fourth, you know, yeah. so it makes a big difference. And the first one where it wasn't snowing or raining or <laughs> below 50 degrees. Yeah. Like, if we could transport these days to Illinois every day, nobody would want to leave. It would be amazing. I mean, you know, again, you look forward to these days. These are the – somebody – all well, many people have asked me over the years, like, what do you like better in terms of coaching, football or baseball? And, you know, the thing that I always talk about is there's no better day than going to a baseball game when it's 75 and, and the light breeze and, and sunny. And, like, there's nothing better than that day. Like, that's my favorite day to coach. The sad part is, unfortunately, living in Illinois – you don't get that many of those days. You don't. You probably get, what, one during football season, and you maybe get a handful during baseball season. One Friday night's a good Friday night, maybe two. Well, we've had some incredibly bad luck on Friday nights in Morton these last few years. It seems like we've had rain, I feel like. We had, you know, what do we have, four home games yeah. this year? I think we had rain for three of them, and then we had, we had rain the last two of the previous season. So we've had something like rain five out of our last six home games. That's a... But... Uh, Positive note, Potter's going to have Coach Adam O'Neill coming, right? Yeah, Coach O'Neill, was uh, he visited a couple weeks back now, and obviously you got the opportunity to talk to the kids, talk to us as coaches. Uh, you know, he's going to bring, I think, a defense-first mentality and kind of an aggressive style of play on that side of the ball coming from Manhattan, Kansas, where he was the defensive coordinator for a state championship team there. And, you know, he mentioned he was on our coaches' show a yeah. couple weeks back, and he mentioned that he talked regularly with the K-State coaches because, of course, K-State right there in Manhattan – Joe Klanderman, K-State defensive coordinator, was a finalist for the Boyles Award, which is the award presented to the top assistant in college football. So if you're learning from Coach Klanderman, you're obviously learning some pretty good stuff. Good stuff right there. Tate's going to miss <laughs> with ball one here as we open up the top of the fifth. I feel like this is a big inning. You know, the Potters have had a couple chances to score. They haven't. You know, you just feel like, the, in terms of momentum, you, you, nobody's gained any upper hand in momentum, but you feel like you don't want to lose it if you can't, if you can't, you know, basically, you got to eventually cash in, essentially. Correct. At some point, somebody's going to do something, right? This is baseball. Uh, games, I don't want to say never, but very rarely end in 0 0 ties. This game will not. This game will not because we do have lights. <laughs> yeah. The other thing is, I mean, how many one nothing games do you even see, though? I mean, it, it's rare. As that one is grounded toward Hurst at short, Ethan is up with it across the diamond to Tanner. First out of the top of the fifth. Good play right there. One thing that I always love is the catcher. He follows the play, right? So Braylon took that one and followed the play down to first base right there. Not that there was going to be any ever doubt, but that extra hustle just goes a long way. By the way, we got Christian Rosa, Christian Rosa at the plate. He made one of the key plays of the game. He's the third baseman for Christian Academy in Knoxville. He made a play, went a little bit to his right, was able to retire our uh, which Brooks Newhoff, who was coming home trying to score on an infield ground ball. So, I mean, you could argue that, that Christian Rosa has made the biggest play of the game thus far. Save the run, otherwise it is a one nothing game. Rolly will deliver. Rosa will follow it straight back. Looked at the Christian Academy in Knoxville first base coach, and it's just good to know as a coach, everybody pretty much does the same thing. Rosa got a little underneath that, and you could see him him telling him to get on top of the ball. I feel like that's the number one thing I say in the third base coach's box is just stay on top. I think it's a common theme. It's almost like the Staples easy button, right? Yeah. Well, I think, I mean, again, I feel like sometimes in baseball we've gotten so entrenched with, like, the MLB stuff with launch angle and all that, we forget that a good solid line drive swing might be the best thing if you're not you know, if you're not Shohei Otani or Aaron Judge or Chris Bryant or anybody like that. Trout, yeah. yeah. Some of these big names. Yeah. Bigger guys can get away with whatever they want. That's the reason they're in the major leagues, you know, making 20-plus mil a year. Uh, can't forget that we have to go to... ELA class. Yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> 
2-2 count for Roley here. One out. No score in the games we've been saying. That one is inside. Three and two. One thing we can't see is the Potter's bullpen, so we are not going to know if anybody starts to warm up unless we see them leave the dugout to go down there. Lo Roley long hold delivers. That one is fouled back, and it's going to land on the other field over there. If somebody over there makes a play on it. Do we get, the, do we get credit for an out? Uh, I don't think they allow those carry rules. <laughs> yeah. They jump the fence, <laughs> yeah. center block wall. <laughs> There's a lot of fencing, too. It's like they don't want you to get out. We do see th that Bennett is now throwing in the Christian Academy of Knoxville bullpen. 3-2 on the way. Followed once again. And once again heading just over the dugout. This one's going to bounce in the sidewalk between fields. Hit the top of the dugout on the other field and roll toward their third base coach on the opposite side. So now we get the flip side, right? So now they're taking Tate Rowley, making him throw some extra pitches here. Yeah, Rosa having a good at bat, very similar to the bat Nolan Ryman had. Good hitters do that, right? They want it. They'll do their own approach. They'll foul, keep fouling and fouling until they either either the pitcher overpowers them or they get the hit that they're looking for. Three, two, once again, foul yep. back once again. I got to assume, pitch count wise, that. Let's say we just Coach Wright just told us he's at 68 pitches. So there you go. 68. So basically both pitchers almost identical in terms of pitch count, quite honestly. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it's been a very similar game. Both sides have really done about the same things. I mean, I think we've had a little bit – we've had more guys in scoring position. But another, another ball, foul out ball. Play. It's out of play. We've had a couple more guys in scoring position, but neither team's been able to capitalize on any mistakes. Not that there have been a ton of mistakes to capitalize on. You know, you almost feel like the first team that's forced into a pitching change is going to be the team that's in trouble. You know, both pitchers have been so effective, and that doesn't mean the reliever, relievers couldn't be, but sometimes it's just that mindset. As that one is up high, that's ball four. Rosa earns a walk. It's a tough one, though. Or you can be preemptive on the other end of that, right, though? Or maybe you can cut it off before it happens. I think that's the hardest thing as a coach, though, is determining when is your pitcher done, right? Because they always think they have more gas in their tank, and it's only one batter, or it's only two batters, or they can't do it a third time, right? Sean Keener at the plate. Well, the other thing is, you know, Especially sometimes as a coach, especially those, you know, if you if you're you have a pitching coach or if you were you're a coach just who was a pitcher, sometimes there's that mentality of, oh, I don't want to take him out, right? Because every pitcher believes that they can get one more guy. Sometimes I think, you know, you you need you need the coach that never pitched to be the guy that tells you he's gotta go. Yeah. Ball one right there. But sometimes you can also see it. You can see when those guys, you know, start to lose just a little bit of the, either the quickness or the their tempo's off. They start looking at the dugout a little more. Maybe they hold a little bit longer. Runner goes. Pitch is low. Braylon oh. Smith throws a second, and Rosa steals it pretty easily. I think Braylon held on to that one a split second longer, trying to get a strike call. Unfortunately, the pitch is a ball. Rosa steals second. Yeah. Two and one now. I think the Potters are going to have Ryan Schaffner up in the bullpen right now, too. So Tate had 68 pitches a little bit ago when we heard. He's probably in the mid-70s right now. That one is in the dirt. Good job by Braylon to stop that. 3-1. Hey, Roll, you good? Calm down, kid. Calm down. That's probably Coach Crawford right there telling Tate to calm down. Keener is the number eight hitter in the Christian Academy of Knoxville lineup, too. I mean, you know, he's obviously the guy... He wants him to go right at him. Oh, that pickoff throw into center field, but good job by Brandon Sieben to be right on it. Can't tell if it's 3 1 or 2 1. I believe we're looking at 3 1. So do I. I think I'm right, but the scoreboard's wrong. But I also thought today that was wrong. Ethan so. Hurst, a little bit of a pep talk for Tate there. Senior, senior right there. All right, these guys want this. One out, one out. Hold up, three, five, let's take it. 
Here comes the pitch. That one is down low. Braylon Smith once again really good. And so I guess it was actually 2-1. No. We were both wrong. Well, yeah. Well, it gives the, pot, gives the Potters another chance for Tate to battle back here. It's hard for us to see what the umpire's signaling back there. I will also argue that this would not be the worst guy to walk, just because you would still put the force back in order. Yeah. That one is two hursted short. He's going to go across the diamond, throws a little low. Tanner digs it out, and so two outs, runner at second base. Well, and not only that, he got that runner. He kept that runner at second. So that also helps just a little bit on yeah. how that... I mean, I really feel like that was a great play by Spangler over there at first. That was picked that off the ground. Yeah, I mean, when Ethan let go of that ball, I was a little worried. It looked it like was, it was sinking. Yeah, and it was going to skip right past him, and then he'd have first and third. Now, he did a good job too of fielding that ball, keeping the runner honest a second, not just let him take off straight for third. So at the bottom of the order, so I feel like this is Tate's last batter he's going to face almost regardless of outcome, and the Potters will go to Shaftnet when Christian Academy in Knoxville rolls back around to the top of the order here. Two outs, runner at second. First pitch, just miss. Again, we haven't seen a lot of outside strikes called, so I do appreciate the umpire's consistency. It's a tough one. I think were I an umpire, I would be the guy that would definitely be calling the outside corner, but, you know, some umpires choose not to do that, and if they're consistent, you can't really complain. Yeah, everybody's got their own strike zones. Nothing that we can or cannot do against that, but mm -hmm. I think you just got to roll with it. Whatever's out there, let's just go. Oh. Take Runner takes third, oh, throw by Braylon, and he is out. So nice throw by Braylon. Good job by Will Lehman. That's a good tag by Will. I feel like the, I mean, based based on the the body language I'm seeing, I feel like that was maybe a steal on your own because it looks like the Christian Academy in Knoxville head coach is having a conversation with Rosa over there as, as if to consider was that the right time to try to steal. It was a close play. He might have been safe, but I'm not sure. I, even though it might he might have been safe, I'm not sure it was the right choice to try to run in that situation. Yeah, but, I mean, you do what you got to do <laughs> on that realm. <laughs> So we are going to head to the top of the sixth, or top of the sixth inning, and we are going to, or excuse me, the bottom of the fifth. My my apologies, bottom Bottom, of the fifth, bottom of the fifth inning, and we are going to get a new pitcher for Christian Academy in Knoxville. It's going to be Tyler Bennett is going to take over. We saw him warming in the bullpen, and I do think we're likely to see Ryan Jaffnett take over for the Potters. So both team, we said to be the first team to make a pitching change. Well, it's going to be Christian Academy in Knoxville. That may just be because they're, they're an inning ahead, yeah. just in the where they're at. Yeah, hey, that's all good. I think. Uh, those of you might have overheard that, right? <laughs> Live mics. <laughs> that is cool to think, like, since we're not like in a booth or announcers, we can hear everything. That, that is true. On. And then we also have the major unfair advantage. We know all the signs. <laughs> but, uh, and we're, so, that's why they have all those microphones at MLB Park. So <laughs> that's they right. Everything. Yeah. They got the news mic'd up. That's like my favorite thing. Could you imagine if we mic'd up somebody for one of these games? That would be very entertaining. I also do want to say, you know, a big thank you to everybody listening. And again, I feel, we feel I feel like this is going well. Again, we'll be doing this tomorrow night again for the Potters next game, and I do think we'll probably be a little smoother with our setup. Uh, speaking of MLB, I want to offer a few MLB scores if you're oh, just just you know watch, yes. watching us and not you know getting a chance to watch MLB. Yankees beat beat the Giants five to nothing. Braves over the Nationals seven to two. Exciting game in Boston as the Orioles top the Red Sox, 10 to 9. Ooh. For all our Cubs fans out there, Chicago Cubs 4, Brewers nothing. That's Ooh. a final, so Coach Craig Wright will be very happy. Uh, Tampa Bay Rays 4, Tigers nothing. And those are the finals so far today in Major League Baseball. Tampa Bay, right? The perennial lowest payroll in baseball, always seeming to get to 75, 80 plus wins every single year. Bucking the system. Versus the Dodgers and the Angels and the Padres and the Yankees. And spend until it hurts. It does. I mean, you know, baseball is an interesting sport. I mean, I mean, every sport has their, you know, powerhouse teams. But it seems like in baseball, you know, the haves and the have-nots are extremely divergent. It's impressive that a team like the Rays always seems to find a way to be competitive. But I think it also tells you by the time you get to that Major League Baseball level, there's so much parity. Yeah. You might have one or two superstars. Major Davis is going to step to the plate right here. First one, check swing. Heads up! 
<laughs> Sorry, guys, I'm on microphone. Didn't mean to get on the <laughs> microphone. It was aiming right towards the left fielder for the other team. He did not see it coming, but it did not hit him, so he's safe. Okay. So here we go. Appreciate Coach letting everybody be safe out here, though. Two and one now to AJ. It's just one of those habits, right? When a ball goes flying right at a kid, you know where it's going. It's just like, at least I'm not going to help them because they're like, well, who knows? Mm -hmm. Whose head is this going? <laughs> yeah. But, well, you know, maybe you just think for a second. The question I always wonder at places like this, and like we said, great facility, again, very similar to East Side. I've, I've thought about this sometimes at East Side, too. How much more space was available to spread the fields out just a little bit more? Land is money, Coach. That is true. There's only so much land on this earth. Every oh, AJ Davis toward right field. That one is sinking foul. Good contact. Drove, drove it. Just happened to drive it a little bit foul. Yeah, AJ's been hitting the ball good for the Potters here this past couple outings. So maybe we can keep this going. Hot bat. See it on deck right here. The land is expensive, so I'm assuming. Plus that means more concrete, more turf. So it's a really, it's a business proposition. Bennett definitely not as hard of a thrower as Bobo, but what may be more notable is just the fact that he may not have the breaker that Bobo did. I would agree. AJ, that one is to right field. This one is a long run, but more likely to be caught, and it will be. So first out here in the bottom of the fifth. Caught out there, one out. Potter's back at the top of the order and Brandon Sieben. Sieben's going to come up at the bat now. Sieben, probably the Potter's fastest player as well, if he can find a way on base. Chance to, for the Potter's to put some stuff in action here. Found the curveball right there, though. That was a pretty good one. Hung that one in there just a little bit. Oh, seven! Here comes the 0-1. That one, another curveball. So he's like, he, it's a definitely a different curveball than what the Potter saw off of Bobo. But this, I mean, you can see Bennett just, he, he seems to like it. He's, I mean, he's throwing for strikes too. So, but Bennett's going to get here, get a sign. Set up outside right here. Another Curve. curveball. Try to bring it back in, but Steven yeah. lays off that one. So he has thrown, I mean, last pitch to AJ was a curse. So he's thrown four straight curveballs here. Question is, when does he try to sneak a fastball back in? Find out. Not yet. Uh, not yet. That one is grounded foul. I mean, Brandon, good contact on that one. 2-2 two -two is the count. Have no two. Potters have had, you know, obviously a couple guys on base that they've had, but also there have been some moments where you feel like a ball just, you know, if it just would have been a little inches, inches, inches right? Brandon gets that one past the third baseman. He's got a double for sure. Yeah, because it's going to roll all the way down there to that 330 sign. Oh, lays off that one. That was the first fastball we'd seen from Bennett in quite a while. Way to leave it to the birds! But he laid off. It was a high. <laughs> a little bit inside. What are your thoughts on the number pitch calling system versus traditional signs? So uh, that one is pop. That one should go foul, and it will. So last year we used the number system, actually, at you the did. sophomore level. You've done, you've done both. Yeah, I've done both. I mean, here's my here's my thought on that. I think the number system, if you've got a catcher that likes it, is great. But, I mean, it, to me, I, I've kind of gone back and forth, but I'm almost more of a traditionalist. I mean, it, you say, like, oh, the number six system is harder to steal your signs. But if you give the... If if you give the signs the right way, as a swing and a miss, Seaman will sprint to first, but the throw is perfect, and so he's retired. If you give the signs the right way, and you don't, you're not super slow, and your catcher can pick them up. I feel like it's pretty hard to steal signs, honestly. I kind of agree, especially at our levels. I mean, unless you got some throwing six pitches, super complicated. And I think sometimes even in the numbering system, you'd get it. You get it. You get into a mindset where you'd repeat numbers. I mean, again, I don't think anybody's listening that closely. But if somebody was listening really closely, they could pick you there too. Mm -hmm. Wrote them all down. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of effort. That is. I mean, I ain't got time. Oh, Braylon swings and misses. One and one now. Big cut right there from Braylon. Right, got that fastball belt, belt high. Look, maybe to be a little bit outside, but. Well, and you get a big hit right here. You get into this part of the game, and you you hope guys don't try too hard to get the lead with one swing of the bat. You know those hero moments. Yeah, Brown's gonna strike strike two right there. 
Because now we're into the bottom of the fifth inning, two outs. You know, you're starting to feel the feel those outs narrowing, and you're thinking one swing could win it. But you don't ever want to have. I mean, it's good to have that mindset, right? Always be the lion. That one is going to be called strike three. Once again, a little bit of delay on the call by the umpire, but he rings up Braylon there, and so we're through five innings, still no score. Yeah, that's it. It's been a good game so far, though, right, Coach? Yeah, it's been excellent pitching on both sides. I mean, now, obviously, Bennett took over in relief for Christian Academy in Knoxville, and Schaffnett, I think, is going to come in for the Potters. It does look that way. So we're going to see the Potters are going to make a couple defensive changes here to try to... Looks like he really is going to go out to right field. So Shafton's going to enter in A.J. Got Nolan Turner heading out defensively. Looks like he's going to be at second base. So Turner's going to go defensively, I think, for Reinman at second base right now. This might be a purely defensive switch. I mean, maybe you wonder if Nolan will end up back in the game on the offensive side of things. Oh, Ryman, yeah. not Turner. Yeah, yeah, that is a good point. Nolan and Nolan. That is Nolan and Nolan. So it's, it's like Nolan. N squared. Yeah, Nolan for Nolan <laughs> right now at second base for the Potters. That's why I've gone to the point where I just use last name. That <laughs> might have been smarter on my part because I'm not sure. I, not sure I actually was helping anybody. <laughs> oh, now we're going to see another change. Oh. oh, hold on. Nolan Ryman is back. Is coming back in. He's going to actually go to third base. You see Will Lehman coming off the field right now. All right. So let's reset this. You got Nolan Ryman at third. You got Hurst at short. Nolan Turner at second, and Tanner's going to stick it out there in first. You got Rowley's going to head out to right. Stevens going to be in center, and Brooks Newhoff in left. Shafton's going to be on the mound, throwing to Braylon Smith there behind the plate. So I'm trying to figure. I'm trying to figure out who who is where. So and now Coach McCarty just. J <laughs> Coach McCarty was making sure that Coach Crawford knew it. I'm trying to figure it out, though. Um, so I'm assuming that Turner entered for Lehman as being DH'd for. Correct. And that would mean Schaffnett probably entered in A.J. Davis's spot. So Schaffnett is in the not. So the, the batting order changes. Ryan Schaffnett right now is batting nine for the Potters. Yep, I would agree. All right, so Schaffnett in the nine hole, now batting ninth for the Potters uh, and on the mound pitching. And so here we go. And he's got to face Jonathan Van Ness. Oh, excuse me. Let me let me reset my lineup. I'm sorry. I will fake the bun out there. change that. The chef has been lights out for the Potters though in his two. Appearances sorry, this so is far. Jack Pearson, by the way. Just make sure that I'm correct on who's hitting. Pearson will fly that one into short right field. Tay Rowley comes in, dives, and makes the catch. Diving catch, Diving catch for Tay Rowley. Rowley right there. So he goes from the pitching right straight. To to the outfield right there and makes a superb diving catch. You know, I feel like the ball, this is one of those, like, you know, baseball rules. The ball finds the guy who switches positions Always. all the time. Because your mind's not right there. He's probably thinking, oh, man, I just got taken out. My arm, maybe he's got a little bit of, I'm just done, right? And then he's got to go out in right field and makes that first play, right? That's that's impressive right there. That is. It's mindset. And this is good to see him locked in, and it was a nice running diving catch. Tate, obviously, a very good athlete, and you know, I mean, the Potters are just fortunate in terms of their outfield. A lot of guys who can play out there. I mean, you'd feel like, and a lot of teams, Tate would be the center fielder, but because of Brandon Sieben's speed and athleticism, Tate ends up playing right. It just makes you so much better. Also, helps save his arm a little bit too. That is, that is kind of weird. I guess it just depends on the day, but. If you took numbers, I bet there's less balls hit to right field. No, I mean I think that's true. I mean I think you know one of the one, as a pitcher outfielder, I feel like your arm is saved just in general a little bit more maybe than those pitcher infielder types. Especially if you're like pitcher short, pitcher catch, yeah, third, first base. You know you got a little bit of leeway. Schaffnit strikeout. Ball gets away from Braylon. Braylon up with it, throwing to first, and nice toss there. Tanner a little bit nimble around the bag, trying to get his foot on the bag and not get run over by the base runner. But end result, strikeout, two to three in the scorebook. Yeah, still great outing right now for Schaffnit. It's come in big game, right? Zero zero. Shaft a sophomore here. Yeah, second year varsity experience, but. Uh, just on point, throwing strikes, getting outs. Had a double in the uh, JV game. Again, we played a JV game and then a more of a straight sophomore game. Shafton had double in that JV game. That one is fouled off. 
Yeah, I think any time that you get a chance to go out of state and play, you want to play as many baseball games as possible. I think if you asked all these guys, they just would have played all day. Oh, I think so. I mean, I think tomorrow is going to be the hardest day when we have a have a sophomore game at 9 a.m. and a varsity game at 7 p.m. I mean, some of these guys are just going to be wondering, like, what are we doing in between? When does the baseball start again? That's good. They're used to playing summer ball, right, where they're playing, yeah. you know, two, maybe three games a day max, but it's still good. Although we did have talk about a team lunch tomorrow after the sophomore game, so there may be that. That foul one, ball that is the another foul ball off the hand. the hand. I feel like we've seen that now four times today. I don't think I've seen that in the past two years. It's kind of a weird one, right? It but really is. It, I mean, let's address it. This new next generation is standing on top of the plate. Yes. That one is straight up. Reinman coming in. Schaffner will take it from the pitcher's mound. I like that choice. And so Schaffner, nice job getting over there, catching that. And I think that was a good choice, right? That's probably in many ways the easiest angle is the pitcher going and getting that ball. Yeah, for sure. That was a good one right there. You know, taking charge. Here we go. We're trying to get the spotters dug up, pumped up. They know the, what's going on right here. Bottom of the sixth inning. Got Potters will have three, four, five coming up. Last out was Braylon Smith. So the interesting discussion will be if the Potter, if Baylor does get on, do the Potters want to run for Baylor? If they do run for him a second time, that will eliminate him from participating in the rest of the game today. But you also want the mindset of if we score this inning, Schaffner's going to shut him down in the seventh. So you're okay using a runner, I think. I don't know. What do you do? Right. I think, I'm sure that's going through Coach Crawford's head right now. So he just stops and looks at this right now. I mean, I think you play. I think you play to win the game, right? So you play with the mindset that if Baylor's on, we're going to score. Let's get him a runner, and Schaff's going to finish the game. But again, it's kind of one of those things that you kind of trying to anticipate what's going to happen next. That's part of the fun, part of the fun of coaching. But part of the challenge, a challenge as well. I think sometimes. Well, it's that part where you want to pull your hair out, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I don't know what. I mean, there's so many ways you can do, and baseball is literally a game of strategy but at the same time as the coach we've talked about this a lot we could have the best strategy in the world but it doesn't really matter because it happens it changes every single pitch every i mean it's out of our control we can practice we can have the best ideas in the world but if they're not executed or they don't go the way that we plan them in our head we just gotta you gotta be able to get creative and think on your feet and i do think we've said it before i mean baseball obviously a player's game maybe more so than any other sport truly i mean yeah you know you can you can yeah. you can call a bunt you can call a steal a hit and run but it's not like football or basketball where you can call set plays to try to manipulate exactly what you want to have happen correct and there's no back picks right <laughs> you can't pull your left guard yeah <laughs> no reverse <laughs> Yeah, very few trick plays in baseball, you know. Part of the fun of football I always find is, you know, what's the trick play this week? Do you have the reverse or the halfback pass or something like that? I was super impressed with the Hoover squad earlier. Like, the second batter of the game threw the old pickoff play, wheel play, perfectly executed yeah. to the nth degree. And nobody was expecting that. No, I mean, give them credit. I mean, again, you can see that process of having played in practice, as you said, since January. You know, we're doing, I think, honestly, we're doing pretty well for – being so early in our season. I think a lot of that's a testament to our, you know, our off-season programs. You know, these guys on their own are doing things yep. at a variety of hitting facilities. Huge props to the Morton Park District and at Morton Youth Baseball Association for having this indoor hitting facility. Ethan Hurst walks. Baylor coming to Baylor is two for two. And our players' huge appetite to get better. I yep. mean, Actually, guys are taking as many reps as possible wherever, whenever. You can see on your screen Luke Bender's number 37 is swinging. He would actually be a pinch hitter if the Potters continue this inning. Or when? When, because there's really no way he, they wouldn't. <laughs> Baylor line towards center field, but unfortunately pretty much right at the center fielder. He'll make the catch there and Hurst back to first base. Bender's Stepping up toward the plate as the pinch hitter for Reinman. Okay. So Benders at the plate again. He's a pinch hitter, batting for Nolan Reinman. First pitch. Curveball. First pitch is in there. First strike. I, don't, I think he was sitting fastball, right? I think he wanted that. I think that. so. I think that's what he was going in there prepared for and wasn't red. Hey, Let's eat. 
Let's talk about some of these metrics. Luke's exit video on those balls that he hits are hard. He's got some some definite pressure behind the ball. I don't know the exact physics term, but uh, yeah. this one up right here could get. Still pretty straight away for Christian Academy in Knoxville in the outfield. Took a little look at Coach Crawford. No steal sign. You know, you start to wonder, do you consider trying to just get a guy into scoring position? At what point do you think we got to get him there? Maybe it's not until you got two outs, though. It's tough, right? Because I don't think – I don't even know if the catcher's even thrown down once today in a game situation. No, I mean, he really hasn't. So, I mean really – We don't really know. I think you'll probably wait till there are two outs. I mean, if Luke does not get on base here, well, now Hurst is going to take one. Uh, good job reading the ball in the dirt. It's a great job by Ethan Hurst. Reads the ball in the dirt. Now you got a man on second, one out. Yeah, he read that perfectly. He didn't hesitate either. So sometimes I think that's what guys do is they, oh, I don't know, did he get it? But he just took off. Hurst got some above average speed as well. Deceptive speed. He really does. I mean, he's a fantastic athlete. Again, anybody saw him play basketball, yeah. you can just see the way he would find his way to rebounds and loose balls, get steals. Just that type, that type of guy that you put him at the top of a zone, we get deflections. And uh, the pitcher's here starting to struggle trying to spin these curveballs, and he's dropped two short. Right? He got benders on two that went right over the plate. Luke didn't want to swing. But now he's missed on two. That one is going to be ball, ball the call, called strike three. You know, maybe he just has the delayed punch out. I mean, we've seen it now a couple times. By the way, the lights are turning on. I was asking what would the lights be like. LED lights. Yeah, LED lights are on. 6.15. I wonder if they're automatic. I, want, I mean, I'm going to guess yes. But All right, so runner on second. Two outs. Tate Rowley at the plate. That one is down low, 1-0. Oh. Russo's the pitcher, right? Uh, Bennett is Bennett. the pitcher. Yep. Yep. So Bennett has been really he's missing low a lot right now. I don't know if he's just trying to keep the ball really low in the zone or maybe he's getting flustered a little bit. Wind and delivery. Rolly grounds one towards second base. Second baseman charges, flips to first, and that will end the sixth inning. So we're going to the top of the seventh, 0-0. Zero, zero. We talked about how rare 0-0 rare zero, zero or one zero games were, but it seems like we're headed that direction. It's a tough one right there, but I think if you really wanted to, I mean, these are these are good games. You yes. Like to watch, to yeah. call. Yeah. Like, it's not like a 25 to nothing blowout where the ball's just flying off the bats or anything. This is like one of those legit pitchers duel. Both teams have threatened a little bit, but nothing ever major. Uh, Potters probably had the most chances there in the fourth or the third when they had the bases loaded. Just couldn't get it. Potters are going to go back to Reinman at third, so Bender's pinch hit. Nolan will re-enter. Didn't think Bender should go back to play third, did you? No, I did not. I was just curious if it would, if you know, you might see Suttles come in defensively, but just probably the easiest thing is just to re-enter Nolan Ryman. I would agree. <laughs> you know, Ryman's comfortable over there playing third. Good arm to throw all the way across the diamond right here. A little bit more trust, probably a little bit more. He's probably had a couple more innings this season. Uh, at third, definitely last year at third over Suttles. Well, and I think the other thing, I mean, you look at it, like you could also manipulate it a little bit where you could bring Brooks Newhoff in from left, but Brooks has been in left all day. Probably the easiest thing is to be as consistent as possible, I think. And I'm not a huge fan of that unless you really, really have to, right? Bring in somebody who's already been playing the outfield into the infield unless you have no other options uh, or you don't want to bring somebody off the bench. But uh, still pretty good, though. We didn't ever check our Twitter. No, we didn't. Let's see if I can uh, pull that up here. Well, we can maybe do that. We'll do that in the middle of this inning. So 14 is going to be up here for the Christian Academy of Knoxville as we are in the top of the seventh. Ryan Schaaf is getting ready to deliver this first pitch home. And it's going to be a first pitch fastball right down the middle right there. One thing I like about Schaaf is he likes to work ahead. Like He is on there. Kind of reminds me a little bit like Mark as a White Sox fan. Mark really esque likes to work pretty fast. Fastball heavy. That ball is that one is fading well fast. hit, but yeah, like you said, fading fast. So no worries there. Oh, two. We are looking at uh, looking at Twitter. We've got a, a lot of updates. A lot of people like the updates from the JV game, and so we have a few new followers we've accumulated as well. Um, 
so really good. I mean, appreciate everybody who's paying attention and just the general idea that, you know, we've got a lot of people that are excited about the Potters down here in Hoover, Alabama. Yeah, great experience for our boys, right? Sometimes when you get out of your comfort zone a little bit, it's when you get to grow as a young man or even a young adult trying to figure out yourself, putting yourself in some pressure situations, playing against some guys you typically don't play against, different styles. I mean... Well, and I think one one thing that's really good is even just the fact that, as you're going to see, that swing and a miss, Chef, and it strikes, strikes out the hitter. But I think it's good. Some of our guys, like we played that JV game that kind of combined those juniors and sophomores and a couple freshmen even, kind of got some of our guys to play together that even in, even, even in our rosters don't traditionally get to play together, which I thought was pretty cool. Yep, and full disclosure for those of you leaving it, watching at home, we lost one of our iPad's batteries dead. So we'll go to the... We have two. Hopefully we'll make it through this game as long as we don't play 14 innings. So. I'll try to get my room. I can try if I can find my remote charger that's in my bag. But uh, As you know, the issue sometimes with those iPads, once they go dead, it's going to take a little bit to get 5% yeah. back. So uh, Let's say we're, we're going best case scenario here. That's what's going to strike up the side. We're going to come up and we're going to get this run. And we're going to be able to make it through on this. That's right. We'll have Brooks, New can have Brooks Newhoff leading off for the, for the Potters next inning. Looking ahead a little bit. And again, we knew that, you know, doing this, we might run into some battery life issues, so no huge shock. That one is followed straight back as well. One and two is our count right now. And Schaffnett will wind and deliver and strike three once again. Ryan Schaffnett struck out two here in the top of the seventh. It's always the ball gets away as the Potters try to throw it around, but thankfully that's probably the best time for the ball to get away because there's nobody on base and there's no harm done. That for sure is the best time. Actually, I would argue that's the only time. <laughs> that's probably true. <laughs> Apologize in advance for one second. I'm going to switch the iPad to the tripod. So you might see a weird view for a second. We'll go ahead and still describe the action as coach is making that change. So Shafnet will wind and deliver. And that one is a little bit low. Ball one. Shafnet delivers. That one is grounded toward Reinman at third. Dolan will charge. Glove it across the diamond, and runner is safe. And again, just we've seen that a couple times. It's kind of that weird hop on the turf, especially. You're not sure exactly what to do. And then, obviously, I honestly feel like Christian Academy in Knoxville has some speed in their yeah, lineup that was as well. A good one. I mean, he beat that one. He beat the two ups. He definitely beat that one out. No questions about it. So. So runner on with two outs. Shaftnit delivers that one. That one is hit towards center field. Brandon Sieben takes an angle and grabs it. Good job by Sieben there to run that down. And so we are through six and a half innings with no score. Great inning right there, right? You battle back. You get that first one on. Uh, here we are, bottom seven, Coach. So it'll be Newhoff to lead off, and I feel like I mean I feel like there's no reason for the Potters to make a ton of lineup changes. Um, you're gonna look and see what we've got there. Uh, I see the Potters have several guys in the dugout with helmets on. I think some of them it's more aspirational. It would be quite a while till Baylor got up again, but he's the DH, so why not wear why not wear your helmet? Think positive, coach. Yeah. Think positive. Yeah. Well, I would hope we just I was hope we just don't need them. That between between Brooks and Tanner and those guys, that we find a way. Twenty three. So we just heard that Ryan Shaft is at 23 pitches right there. So, but a good inning right there as we go. I mean, I think you don't want to go into extras, right? You want to figure out a way to end this right yeah. here. Shaft would be the third hitter this inning, by the way. He has obviously not hit yet today in this game. And again, he did hit in the JV game earlier this morning. But the other issue that we run into, Coach Wright, I just heard, overheard him, is talking about the time limit. Now, we're not really in any danger yet because obviously we have, we've, We've had, you know, a fairly quick game, but, I mean, we, we probably aren't playing more, probably not playing more than another, uh, than one extra inning would be my guess. Yeah, because we're coming up on two hours right now, but if, we, if 
before we do lose here, we're going to be hopefully be back tomorrow. We'll have our JV game. Our JV game will not be broadcast, but we will be back tomorrow night under the lights, 7 p.m. with extra batteries <laughs> or finding a power outlet, one of the two. But you can keep watching that as we are here. Same thing at Morton Potter TV on YouTube. We'll put on the Twitter. Uh, we'll put our JV scores up there as well in the morning. Uh, some more big games tomorrow versus Vestavia Hills in the JV and then the Far City Potters are going to take on Spain Park, the Jaguars who played uh, just before us tonight, so always good stuff here for the Morton Potters and again, both those teams are more local so you're going to get a little bit of a taste of the, the local teams, we'll see here, Brooks follows that one straight back, good yes. swing at it, he was on that fastball, just missed the top half of that ball a little bit Potter's looking for that walk-off winner. I mean, that's what it takes. I mean, you're going to have to do something, you know, a little bit right here to, you know, you got to get this base runner on. Sun is shining right on that batter's box, too. Yeah. Too. I feel like this, I mean, the, the, it may not be the easiest to see right now in the batter's box, to be completely honest with you. But it's almost like the sun is right in their eye. Brooks is squinting a little bit. Bennett delivers. That one is down low in the dirt. I think the good thing, though, is the sun is in due right field, uh, maybe a little bit to the right. So it's not like in his eyes and center. Which is, actually, the fields are actually oriented really good for this. Unless you played an 8 a.m. game on field five over there or something. But all good the way that we're doing things. So 1-2 will be on the way here in just a moment. Here it comes. And that one is flown toward left center field. Center fielder is going to drop back and position himself underneath it and make the catch. Brooks gave it a ride, but just not quite enough. And we've got one out here in the seventh inning. Bailed up. Just didn't quite, quite make it there. And again, we talked about it before, but these are big fields. 330 down the line, 375 in the gaps, 400 to straightaway center field. So basically about, about roughly five... Some are really 10 to 20 feet shorter at every, or longer at every spot than what you typically see at Illinois high school baseball. Yeah, but I, I mean, I think of that just lots has to do because these are, you know, year-round fields, yeah. not just high school. I'm sure they could pro they probably have some, maybe some college, I don't know. No. Just for anything. Yeah, and I know we have, I mean, we'll, we'll maybe take some pictures and put it on Twitter. We have the Metplex Stadium Field, which is where the SEC has played their championship game in the past. That is just to, it's actually just to our right from where we're, we're currently we had the standing. We to drive by it this morning. Pretty impressive facility right there. Wouldn't ne mind to play my home games there. No, I think I'd be okay with that. Tanner takes a strike one and two, or two and one, excuse me. Oh, we should probably give a shout out to Miss Jackson, right? Our, our bus driver. Our amazing bus driver from Vandalia uh, Bus Alliance who took us all the way down here and got us here safely. So thank you, Miss Jackson. Tanner follows that one back. If Tanner does get on, I'm assuming the Potters will run for him as well. I'm not seeing anybody immediately moving around in the dugout like they would be a pinch runner, but, but Potters do have some speed still available on their bench. That one is down low, three and two. Let's do the predict the pitch. Where you go, the fastball? I think he's got to come back with his fastball. He hasn't. He hasn't been. He's been. He's thrown a lot of curveballs. But he's missing. He's been missing with him lately. So Tanner, I'm sending that fastball. Oh. There it is. There it is. Fastball ball four. We'll see if we do get a runner for Tanner. Now, actually, as I'm looking in the dugout, the Padres don't have a ton of running options just because Nolan Turner already entered to play defense, and Will Lehman was playing defense earlier today. Maybe somebody like Spencer Tim, but I think if you ran Spencer and Tanner, it might be a dead heat. So you don't necessarily see one of that. See, see Spencer is tremendously faster. Yep, we're going to get a mound visit as well. So lots of good things happening out there. Shefton's going to bat right now. we got Brandon Stevens going to be on deck, so nine then top. Coach Crawford was kind of looking in the dugout and trying to see. I mean, the other guy, I mean, honestly, you have a you have Brett Granger, but, you know, Brett hasn't really been running the bases, pretty much a pitcher-only type of guy. I don't know if you I don't know if you trust him. Not a, you know, I mean, this is a big situation. Yeah. Right? It'd be, you know, you're kind of high pressure for a guy that hasn't been on base very often to put him out there and have him run. Like, he, yes, yes, he would beat Tanner in a foot, foot race, but would he make the right decision? Correct. That one is down low. 
you know, maybe with two outs you make a sub with somebody like Brett, just because with two outs there's a lot less pressure, you're just running and sprinting once the ball's hit. Yeah, I don't know though. I mean, it's a, it's a very tough one. Yeah. I think I'd probably just leave him in. Schaffnett grounds it toward short. Play it short, play to second, and double play turned. Impressive turn by the second baseman there. He caught that and turned it turned it very smoothly, quite honestly. So, by the way, I'm looking at my, at the at my watch here. 6:28. Now we start we started a little after the scheduled 4:30 start time, but not much afterwards. So, I feel like we are we are very likely just just gonna play the eighth inning. I think you're probably right. So we talked about it though. The whole thing of uh, Game's not even a tie. Yeah, it's like we're we may we may have accidentally predicted it, but no, let's hope not. Yeah, say we hope not. We're, we said there were fewer one nothing games, but we would certainly we would certainly not object to the Potters winning one to nothing if they can get three more outs here and then find a way to scrape one across. We're gonna have to top the order of next inning too. Yeah, so that is gonna be a good point. The Potters will be in good shape speed then. Speed out of the gate. You know, Brand Seaman has been on fire. Yeah, and then you look Braylon again, kind of, you know, looking for his first big hit of the year, I feel like, but this would be a great time for him to have it. I would agree. You know, one other guy I'm looking at the Potters, the GB Kruzik was potentially an option to run there, but at the end of the day, when you consider the double play, you're probably lucky you didn't, didn't, I wouldn't say, right yeah, there. I didn't want to say you didn't, but you didn't burn it because, again, you think about it next inning, you might want him for Braylon or something like that. And Braylon's a freebie, right? Because the yeah, that's shoot, right. You don't have to burn him; you can just run him. Yeah, that's a really good point. So here we go. We're about to play the top of the eighth inning. Again, thanks to everybody who's watching us. You know, be sure to like, share, subscribe. Part of the Dr. Smock's vision as superintendent is to share more videos, do more things like this, uh, as well as all the videos that you see on the Morton Potter TV YouTube channel. Uh, he sends them out every week. So that one is a bit tight, and it'll be ball one. Always be sure to like, share, subscribe if anything that you like is out there for us. And here we go, top of the eight. This is where uh, you find that grit, that perseverance. What are you going to do? Like, what are you made of? This is seven, eight, nine in the order, but this is Christian Rosa, who's actually hit the ball hard a couple times. Sometimes, you know, you're just locked in. You're having a good day. It looks like he's pretty locked in. He takes 2-0. and That one, I felt like, was pretty pretty close to the zone. But, again, when you're locked in, maybe you're seeing it really well, too. Or at the same time, you know, this is top eight. You're going to make a three a strike. There is a strike. You're going to make them beat you, right? That old school mentality, you know. There is strike two. Two and two now. I was playing straight away, not giving too much away. That one is right there, strike three. Get my, see who's up next here. So again, going through the lower part of the order here, that one is fisted toward Hurst. He comes across the base, makes the play. Tanner Spangler, another nice play at first base. Tanner said a cut. Tanner said a couple cuff, couple cuff throws to handle, but he's found a way to do it. He's doing what he's got to do to get the job done, right? You know? And if you're the Potters, right, we have a, I wouldn't say revolving door. We have a lot of guys who play first base. Yes. So you don't get a ton of innings there, especially we put a lot of our pitchers over there as kind of our safeguard. We have a lot of bigger, like 6'4", six, 6'5 six, guys. It just works out where they play first base. And, uh, not getting those innings, but that was pretty good. Shaft is looking pretty comfortable right there. Bunt here, oh, right wow. back to the mound. Nice and easy, Shaft. That'll save your pitch count, too. Coach Crawford fired up here. So, so and again, we're looking at a situation, and I'm kind of reading, reading Coach's body language. He's fired up, but I think we're also assuming this is going to be the last step back, that, that they are gonna, they're going to cap this thing after the eighth inning. I think you're right. You can see the sun starting to come down. Sieben's speed is definitely a weapon in this situation if he can find his way on base. An opportunity to maybe steal a base 
And again, you mentioned you mentioned the idea of obviously the opportunity to courtesy run for Braylon if he gets on. So the Potters are in the, probably the best case scenario in terms of speed. And you know we've we haven't we don't really hasn't really played a huge role to this point. But I mean, the, a ball roll into the gap could be a huge could could be a huge factor in a game like this as well. And so Potters with some speed right now could be a big thing. So as of right now, still haven't had any notifications of time limit. So we'll just keep it going. There you go. Well, everybody seems to be in, everybody seems to be enjoying themselves. The beautiful day here. I mean, I wanna, I'm going to use the term gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. Like coming from Illinois, this is this is where it's at right here. I wish every day could be like today. Wait, I mean, you are not wrong. This is really something else. I mean, it's I like 75, sunny. I'm right at the point where I'm not sure whether I should have my sun sunglasses on or not. Sun's starting to kind of go down, but yet there's still some still some places that that it's really sunny at. I'm gonna stick with the sunglasses. Mine are prescription, so <laughs> they help me see a little bit. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but here we go. Bottom mate right here. I think everybody Potter's dog got fired up. Potter's fans fired up over there. Oh, we get the standing. Yeah. Oh. Back up here. Oh. Seabin grounds one in the hole. Shortstop oh, yeah. opposite across the diamond, but there's no way. No way you're throwing out Brandon Seabin there. Potter's got their leadoff batter on board. We got the Potter's fan zone. All those parents are fired up over gonna, there. I'll, I'll dock right so there. I'm not shot. Nobody, I'm not in the camera shot there. <laughs> so Braylon Smith at the plate. Lots of claps going. You got everything happening right here. Everybody getting excited. We can see if fans are clapping. Braylon is going to square and bunt. Bunt is pop foul. Nothing. No harm done there. No. Uh, and you know, the one thing I do wonder is how often has Braylon been asked to bunt. It may not be his forte. He's been a power hitter pretty much his entire career. We'll see if Coach leaves the bunt on here. Braylon. Good speed at first. Yeah, like. great speed at first with Seaman. Braylon gets the sign from Coach Crawford. Braylon will pop that one straight up. up in the air. That is actually a very difficult ball to catch if you're at shortstop, but he does make the play, which, I mean, now what now what becomes interesting here is do you send Brandon Seaman to get him into scoring position? He's definitely the fastest player on the Potters roster. But you at got, the same time, you probably have your two best hitters up back to back. No. So do you want to risk that yeah the bat. i mean the biggest question is right do you want to make it so you can win it we want to take the risk that you can win it with one hit or hope you can win it with two confidence That's yeah what you gotta do we'll see what happens here the other thing is ethan hurst could win it with one hit if he hits yeah. a gapper because seaman will score from yeah, first score from first Hurst swings and misses at that one Hurst is also a man of very few emotions. So you can't really tell if he's nervous, you can't tell if he's happy, excited. He's looking confident up there right now. Here comes the pitch. That one's in the dirt. Great job by their catch. They're blocking it in front. Kind of like we talked before the game, you know, with that, that turf and it's taking those weird bounces. Keeping the ball in front is super important. Hurst steps into the box. This is Tyler Bennett on the mound for Christian Academy in Knoxville. Here comes the pitch. Seaman does go. Foul ball. And, you know, maybe that's what almost you're hoping for is that Seaman goes at the same time Hurst finds a gap and then he can cruise in. Yeah. But now it's a 1 2 count, so we'll see what's up here. Hurst at the plate. Seaman at first. Bennett on the mound. Here comes the pitch. Hurst falls that one back. We've got a ton of technology going on, folks. I actually have I'm trying to record my, on my phone to get the final, if the Potters can push one across here, to have that video that we can post on Twitter as well. We have all kinds of stuff. So uh, we look like we're overwhelmed by technology. We might be, actually. But hopefully it's all working pretty well for you back at home. Here comes the pitch. Hurst fouls that one back. Oh, did you see those hands by Bailey right there? Catch the ball off the net. That's impressive. Fans are getting into it. We can you can hear the clapping behind us. Dug out two strikes. For those of you watching home, one out. Seaman's at first. Here comes the pitch. Seaman go. goes. Ball in the dirt. 
Brandon will steal that one with no trouble whatsoever. Yeah, curveball right there, perfect pitch to run on. Took it, timed him out. The other thing is he didn't, didn't, throw, didn't look over, didn't throw over once right there. Sieben leads from second now. Hurst still at the plate. Here comes the pitch. That one is going to be down low. That'll be a ball, three and two. Three, two count here. Shortstop is holding Sieben relatively close at second yeah. base. I think you saw how easy he got that first one. Still gonna take a, a Here comes the three two, that one is foul back. <laughs> Baylor Wilkinson on deck for the Potters. Chasing a bunch of foul balls this at bat. Hurst having a really good at bat. Gotta believe every pitch you see makes you a better hitter. So Ethan Hurst getting better and better with this at bat. Here comes the pitch. And he'll swing and miss at that one. Sieben unfortunately not able to take third. He thought about it, but the catcher able to tag Ethan, so no chance for Brandon to take that extra base. So two outs. Sieben still at second. Baylor, two out of three today, and they're gonna walk him. The Potters crowd does not like the intentional walk. The boos are out. But I mean, I, I, I love this if I'm Nolan Reinman. I mean, I love when somebody intentionally walks someone to get to me coming through in the clutch here. It's a big one, right? Baylor's been hitting the ball really well lately. And then, you know, Reinman had a really good at bat last time, too. Thought off all those pitches after not getting the first one down. <laughs> I mean, strategi strategically, this is probably the right move to walk him. But, I mean, Nolan definitely, guys, come with a lot of big hits over the years. Yeah. Well, that one's in the dirt. He's going back to that curveball and shorten it. He's got a couple of our guys to, you know, go into that. I got to believe there's going to be a point here where another one gets away from him. Brandon's going to get to third base. Tate Rowley is going to be on deck for the Potters as well. Ryman right field. That ball is back. Right fielder tracking it, and that is caught. Nolan Ryman gave it a ride, but unfortunately not quite enough of a ride. Close. Caught at about the 330 sign out there. Ball yeah. caught at about 326. And so the ball, ball travels 326 feet. And unfortunately, Potters will have to go back out on defense. Ryan Schaffnett walking back to the mound. He'll face the top of the order for Christian Academy in Knoxville this time. We're in the ninth inning. Yeah, top nine. Still a 28% of battery for those of you at home who are worried about. We might, we might make this. <laughs> well, we're going to get a run. Yeah. Bottom nine. We're going to get a run. Shaft's going to be quick this inning. We're going to run in the bottom of the ninth. Say, so I do have the remote charger, but I have to, would have to dig through we're, my bag to try to find it. I'm in the same boat. <laughs> but if we get to under 20, well, one of us will start searching. Again, it'll be top of the order for Christian Academy in Knoxville. But Jaffnett's been pre breezed pretty coolly through the innings that he's pitched to this point. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's looked really well, right? Poise, throwing strikes. Um, defense, good defense helping him out right here. So, Potters are where they want to be. You know, they're in control. For those of you that might be joining us and thinking, you know, this weather looks really nice and not sure why, I want to tell you that we are at the Hoover Metplex in Hoover, Alabama here for Potters Baseball Spring Break Trip. So Potters are taking on the Christian Academy of Knoxville here, and it is, and as you can see on the scoreboard, it's 0-0 in the top of the ninth. Ryan Shaftin on the mound, and throws first pitch that's just a bit upstairs. Reimer at the plate is obviously a smaller player, so oh, you know he's going to be a little bit tougher guy to throw into that strike zone. He'll swing and miss at that one, so it'll be a one and one. Shafnett's still just dealing out there, right? Just working his own game. Yes, Reimer fouls that one off toward his teammates. One, two right there. We've said this before, but Christian Academy in Knoxville looks like they brought their entire program and dressed all of them because their dugout has about 35 people in it. Well, I mean, if we brought everybody, I mean, our, I mean, if you look down the sidelines, you look at our people, yeah. we put all our guys, we'd yeah. also. 
just misses that's a bit up. Yeah. No, and I mean, again, I think it's great to, you know, get everybody out here and kind of have all everybody get the experience. I think it's good for the younger guys to watch what has been a very high-level varsity baseball game here. Yeah, this is an impressive game. People would pay money. Oh, well, people did pay money to see this, but, you know, this is something that a lot of people would pay. Shafton goes 3-2 here on Reimer. Need the... Do not want to walk the leadoff man, especially with the speed that he has. It'd be very similar to what the Potters did last inning. Reimer flies that one off foul. We've gone through a whole lot of different appearances on this field with the sun beginning to go down here and the lights turning on. That one is fouled toward the left field line. It drops about a foot and a half foul. So Reimer fouls one right, fouls one left. We hope that his next one is a fly out right to Brandon Seaman in center field. Or strikeout. No, it'll work too. A lot of good at-bats have been had by all these guys. We're starting to see, you know, just a pitch counts piling up. But again, Shaft has been, had pretty easy innings up to this point. So I'm not particularly worried about his pitch count. Shaftnet winds, delivers, and that one is up high for ball four. Leadoff man on for Christian Academy in Knoxville. See what the Potters do defensively here. It's a bunting situation. This is the one thing, you know, you always wonder about the bunt in this spot only because you are giving away an out. You know, you're getting the guy to second, which obviously is an advantage, but, you know, do you think you have the opportunity to steal it? We'll see what happens. Bunt, push toward first. Great bunt. Turner covers first, and the runner is safe. Yeah. Shafted fell coming out of there. Turner had the back side there and just there's just nowhere for that ball to go. And really, I mean, excellent bunt. We've talked about Christian Academy in Knoxville having some wheels. Hustle hard. You pushed it. Perfect. Yeah. I mean, you got to assume another bunt is coming here, right? Uh, I mean, left-handed batter? I would assume so. I mean, this time I don't think I'm going first base. I'd probably push to the third base side. We saw a wheel play from Hoover we talked about earlier. I mean, yeah. this would not be a bad time to throw a wheel in here, try to get that guy at third if you can do it. Bunt is coming. That one is bunted foul. Got a backspin on it. Looks like we're going to get a mound visit from Coach Crawford here. I talk just about that idea of holding the guy close at second base. I mean, he was just in, on fire sprinting from second, second to third. third there. I mean, the one thing is, if we're fortunate enough to have Christian Academy in Knoxville here pop up this bunt, then be the, the double play situation would definitely exist if the runner at second base gets as big of a jump as he did last time. For sure. I think, it's, I think it's just one of those things, too, where you're trying to sell your team down, right? You just had two things not really go your, your yeah. way. You need to reset. Com Coach Crawford's got nothing but confidence in his guys to do what they need to do. So just go out rear it. What's going on? I mean, out here throwing strikes. The other thing is you always think about, do you have a pickoff play that you want to consider running at this point? But, you know, you also got to be careful with that because if you haven't practiced it a bunch, you don't want to throw the ball away in this situation. Potters are definitely in a bunt defense. You can see Nolan Turner shaded heavily toward first base now. Yeah. Turner's almost on the grass. Brown's still a little bit even back, so probably going to have Shaftman or Braylon to pop and get it. Bunt right back to Shaftman. He's got a shot at third. He's going to go to first. That's the right choice, though. Again, we talked about the speed that we saw over there. Well, now you're in a strikeout or pop-up type situation where you want to get one or the other. Tate Rowley is going to shade a little bit. This is a situation where you, I mean, you could you could intentionally walk. Yeah. You get the force at home. Yeah. I mean, because that guy's, got, I mean, base hit yeah. is going to score. If you get, if, no if you get down 2-0, I would intentionally walk. So that's ball one. So if this, if this is a ball, if this is a ball, I'd say just put him at first base and get your, then your pitcher doesn't have to throw from behind. Obviously, obviously, if he comes back and tie and evens the count, you want to let him attack the hitter. But that one is a pop up. 
Rowley's got a long way to run. Turner's got a long way to run. Rowley underneath it. That's the guy you want. To Rowley's definitely the guy you want to have catch it because he's also got the cannon in right field. Holds the runner. Coach, Coach McCarty and Coach Crawford discussing what they want to do as far as who they want to face between these two hitters. There's also the whole, I mean, there's also the walking in. Yeah. That's the one nerve-wracking thing, too. You don't it's to load the bases and have where you could walk in a run. The only issue is you do have a force at every base if you do walk him. Shafton is going to go ahead and face him. That is going to be swinging a miss strike one. I don't know. I think maybe in this situation, just give it to him. Like, because if it's going to put it on, no. he hasn't walked anybody yet. Yeah, no. I mean, that's... I mean, you just you just got to be... Trust in, right? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. You trust your pitcher to get the hitter, then let him go ahead, ahead and attack him. That one is fouled off. Now he's up 0-2, so he's in great shape. Yeah. Shows how much we know, right? You know, this is what we talked about earlier about the pull your hair out type situations where you think about every possible scenario and you can over you can overthink every possible scenario. 0-2, Braylon with a nice block. One two. That was a good pitch too, right? I mean, that's when you trust your stuff right there. It took a little bit off. I mean, Shafnet definitely throws the, throws what we'll call a heavy ball, where he's got a good sink naturally coming out of his hand, which makes it tough to hit, but sometimes tough to catch, too. Hard, should be noted, got to get the out at first, right? So, hard hit, ground ball to Ryan, and they got to throw the way. Get his motion, bub! All right. Well, no wor no worries there. I mean, again, it's one of those things that, you know, late called, late called timeout. And there's no pitch clock in yeah. high school. Yeah, that's right. Be. Our games are still three hours long. <laughs> Here comes the pitch. Strike three. Big pitch for Shafnett there. He retires the side with runners on second and third. Pitch is out of trouble. Ball, I mean, every pitcher we've seen has pitched out of trouble impressively in this game. I mean, I'm just very impressed with everyone um, by the way game time right now is 2 hours and 18 minutes based on what we're watching here so uh, hopefully we're not headed to a 3 hour game but I think the Potters you know, would like to end this one as quick as possible right here Tanner Spangler we're going to roll it up. Rolly oh, yeah, Rolly will lead, up for, lead off. That is correct. You're right. Good call, Coach. Rolly leads off, then Spangler. Oh, that was... Oh, excuse me. Rolly knew off Spangler will be the order. Yeah. Shafnett is still in that nine spot. Obviously, he's done a great job of coming in and pitching. And then top. Yeah. Be nice to get, again, although I say it's nice to get the leadoff man on, both teams have done it the last couple innings and still haven't scored, which I think is a testament to the quality of pitching that we've seen today. Correct. Let's talk about this, right? After one of these games, this is a hard fought. This is a really good baseball game. Like you're gonna have somebody's gonna lose, somebody's gonna win. Like how do you walk away from that on either side? If you win, it's super easy. Like you did the things you did, they need to win. But if you lose, man, you just battled your heart out for two hours plus nine yeah. innings. Yeah, I mean, I hope you hope the attitude is that you know you know the quality of your opponent, and it was worth it to play a team this good for this long. You know, I think the Potters are probably you know in a position now where this would be a. This, I mean, I don't want to say either win would be bigger, but for the Potters to come down here, ten hour bus ride basically roll out against a team that obviously is an excellent team out of Tennessee. I mean, you know, I think to some extent Christian Academy in Knoxville is sort of the favorite in this game. Potters would be, be to, to an extent at least, pulling off an upset to win it. No matter what, if you've been watching this game or if you've been here, at, you know, Matt, it's a, a great game to watch baseball. Rolly takes strike one, one and one here for Tate. We still haven't heard anything about a time limit. I mean, we do have a pitcher up in the bullpen for Christian Academy in Knoxville. Let's just say a time limit doesn't exist. I mean, it's almost one of these games that if we talked about the idea of like how few games end 0 0, it would be bizarre if that's actually what happens. Okay. Tay really have not get maybe a little left field bloop right here over the third base, maybe slicing it out. I mean, just getting the man on base, right? Just find a way on base, any way you can, Tate. That one is grounded. First baseman's going to come and take it himself, and hit will be the first out of the ninth inning. Brooks Newhoff, head of the plate. He barreled one up last time, just couldn't quite get it over the center fielder's head, but definitely looked pretty locked in. Been hit by a pitch. He's done a couple of different things for the Potters. Oh, 
right center gap, still the largest gap out here. Newhall follows that one straight back. I think it's getting bigger. It almost looks like the right fielder is shading more towards the line as the game's gone on. I feel like Brooks has had a couple good swings at balls today. Just needs one to time up perfectly and land out there. And I'd say the green grass, but I guess it's the green turf. Strike two. Foul ball from the other game. Again, Spangler on deck. Shafton would follow him. These are those games that prepare you for for May and June. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. I mean, this feels like a postseason game. Yeah, with the like a long, drawn-out battle for the sectional championship against Washington. I mean, it's got that same kind of intensity where you're riding on every pitch. You know, anybody who gets on base feel, feels like a critical base runner. Yeah, great pitcher's duel today. More balls on the field. You know, the groups that are ready to play next, I feel like they've been waiting forever. <laughs> and, you know, it really hasn't been that long. I mean, the pace of this game has actually been pretty quick, but you go nine innings, you feel you feel like it's been a long game. Um, again, sorry for yelling in the mic. Habits, when balls just fly into the field, it's like, oh, stop. This is a good one, though. Three straight foul balls from other fields. Yeah. Now we're finally going to reset and have a 1-2 pitch. Bennett facing Newhoff. Bennett delivers, and that is going to be a little bit outside. Two and two now. Potter's crowd trying to get into it. Just They just need something to cheer about. They've been into it for a while. They have. Like, they oh, have. Well, I'm out of energy now. Yeah. you got to bring it back. <laughs> two, two. That one is flown toward right field, but foul. Another foul ball right there. I mean, maybe the right fielder is the smartest, smartest person out here as he keeps creeping toward that line. A bunch of foul, yeah, bunch foul balls seem to be moving that direction. Center fielder stall in our shade a little bit that way. Took a couple steps. This is where it's fun, though. Hopefully we end up on the winning side of this one. 2-2. Two -two. New off. Swings and misses. Strike three. And Tanner Spengler walks to the plate with two outs. Pitchers, right? Pitchers do it right here. I mean, pitchers are doing what they need to do here in these late innings. I mean, again, just so impressed with all the pitchers from, both yeah, both sides, Rowley and Schaffnett for the Potters. We had Bobo and, and, and Bennett for the Christian Academy in Knoxville. I mean, just a very, very competitive game and great pitching offense. You know, both teams have had their chances. Uh, not a ton of chances, but they've had them. Spangler will take strike one. I think he was ready for that one. Now if Spangler gets on, I do think you're going to see GB Kruzik run for him. I think with two outs, ninth inning, you're going to you're going to lay it all out there. I would think so. You want to go speed? Oh. Swing and a miss there for Tanner. 0 and two. Well, you saw you got him on that first one. He was out there. It was like, oh, I want to swing, and then they stopped the last moment. Pitcher comes right back with that. Good pitching right there. Good sequence. Let's see if he goes back to it or if he tries to sneak a fastball by. No, trifecta, and it works. Strike three. We're through nine innings. Still no score. Umpires are uh, walking toward each other. You wonder... At what, and I think they're more just worried about all these foul balls that keep getting hit onto the field than anything else right now. Well, he just got himself another ball. Yeah, there you go. go. That's a good point. It's community here. We're yeah. We'll just share all the baseballs. So we are in the 10th inning. I mean, like, I don't know if anybody saw this coming when we sat down, got ready for this game today. Not just 10th inning. 0-0 zero, zero yeah. 10th inning. Yes. Which is pretty crazy. <laughs> Sue Cushman is out of lines on her scorebook. She's out of rows. She just doesn't know what to do. You don't see a lot of 10 inning high school baseball games. I mean, it's. Flip the page. Or you start scoring in, in the totals column. There's two options really there. Yeah. <laughs> so, Chef is going to go back out here. Still you know, throwing good. I think his, I mean, truly, I felt like his last batter, we got the big strikeout last inning, might have been the hardest I'd seen him throw all day. I think he fought, found a little extra gear there in the clutch situation and fired strike three when he really needed it with runners on second and third. Yeah. True statement. 
So last out, by the way, was Spangler. So if, when the Potters do roll around again to hit in in the bottom of the tenth, it'll be Schaffnet leading off. Schaffnet will wind and deliver. That one is down low. Wind and deliver there. That one is flown towards center field. It is more or less towards Seaman. Seaman's just going to step back a few steps and grab it. Brandon needed to drop back about five paces, but secures the catch without too much trouble. So one out here in the bo or excuse me in the top of the tenth inning. Christian Academy in Knoxville and the Morton Potters 0-0. This is from the Hoover Metplex in Hoover, Alabama. And that one is a bit up high for a ball. Again, Potter's back in action tomorrow night here from the Hoover Metplex. That one is going to be called just a bit down low. Maybe a bit outside. Again, we've talked all day. Haven't had a ton, haven't had a ton of outside corner strikes called. There's one right down the middle for a strike. Two and one now. Schaffnet winds and delivers. That one is grounded toward Ethan Hurst at short. Nice hop there. Cross the diamond. Spangler a stretch at first. And two outs now. You know, the other question, Coach, we got to ask ourselves, if this did go in 11th inning, I mean, Schaffnet entered in the 5th yeah. after or entered in the 6th after Roley pitched 5. Schaffnet, as the reliever, if he goes into the, into the 11th, will have pitched more than the starter. That's kind of that's an interesting <laughs> one, but I mean, it happens. It does, and, and you know, bunt, and it's going to be a strike there on the bunt attempt. You start to wonder, though, I mean, you know, Ryan really has gotten a lot of, I mean, Tate was a strikeout pitcher, right? We expect that from Tate. Ryan's had a lot more quick outs. You know, he might have a few more innings left in him. I think it's a valuable uh, insight there. That one is fouled straight back, yeah. I think the other thing is we might just be hoping for a Potter's run to finally scratch across here in the in the tenth inning. But well, that's what we really need. If we're being honest, we need one of those runs. And strike three. Schaffnett finishes the top of the tenth with a strikeout. And so the Potters are going to be hitting in the bottom of the tenth here in a 0-0 tie game against the Christian Academy of Knoxville. And it's just, you know, this one just keeps on rolling. Tyler Bennett is going to still be on the mound for Christian Academy in Knoxville as well. And, you know, what's it going to be that scratches across that run? Is it going to, you know, people start thinking walk-off homer? Is it going to be some, some you know, weird play, an error, somebody mishandles a ball? Or do we finally have something we haven't had all day, which would be three consecutive hits? All of the above? All of the above, yeah. But you start thinking, I mean, truly, like, that's probably the thing that's been most unlikely, it seems, in this game is a team just stringing together a couple hits. Yeah, but I think that's something that can happen at any time. You just got to get those hits. We've been talking about the courtesy run or the running situation. You pointed out with Braylon, but it'd be the same thing for Ryan, right? You could run GB for free yep. because he's the pitcher. No matter if that's what we want to do or not. So here we go. Bottom of the 10th inning. Shaftnet will lead off. Seaman up second. Braylon Smith up third. So 9-1-2. I mean, 9-1-2 always feels like a good rally starter to me. It's better than 9-1-1. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so here we go, though. Here comes the pitch. That one is outside for a ball. Schaffner grounded into a double play and is only at bat. Be a good opportunity right here. All right, help us cause a little bit, maybe. Just get Poke one out there. Well, and I do feel like, I mean, even though it's a double play, he did find a barrel. I mean, it was a hard hit ball. It's been that well as of late. I mean, we haven't had a ton of it. Like, again, it's kind of our first time, like, really, really outside in some decent conditions, so. That one is grounded toward short once again. High hopper across the diamond and Schaffnet. Oh! Oh! 
close, but the first baseman had a little trouble handling it. He did get it. You know, Shafton, unfortunately, it slowed down a little bit. I'm not sure even if he'd been at full speed, if it would have made any difference. I think he was going to be out no matter what. Yeah. But got to run, though. Learning experience. Yeah, absolutely. Always. Back to the top of the order for the Potters here. Brandon Sieben with one out here in the bottom of the 10th inning. That one is bit outside. Sieben had a good bat last inning and then got on and almost got there. Just got to keep it going. Swing and a miss at that one, one and one. How much did we talk tonight? I don't what are we going to talk about tomorrow night? I'm going to say we've, we've covered a lot of random topics, which is what happens when you're in a zero-zero game in the tenth inning. But I guess we got all day to think of random topics for tomorrow. Steven's going to get this one. So big jump. So Steven played varsity last year. Something yeah. I noticed just in a couple games we've had this year. A lot more patient at the plate, right? He's got to approach. He's in there. He knows what his purpose, what he wants to do. I think that confidence is so huge as he grounds one toward third, third baseman across the diamond, and Seaman retired. So we're going to two outs now as Braylon Smith heads to the plate here in the bottom of the 10th inning. You know, that's one thing that I think some people don't always think about is what is your purpose when you're at the plate? you got to have a plan. You can't just go up and swing all willy-nilly. Um, so Braylon's had a rough day here. Maybe he can put it together right here. That would be a great thing. Just kind of roll him a little more confidence into tomorrow, too, if he can do that. That's a pretty important thing. I think the sun has officially set here. I think so. We are just a little after 7 o'clock local time here. Braylon takes ball two right there. So two balls, zero strikes here in the bottom of the 10th inning. Score is still nothing, nothing on this pitcher's duel. Great pitching from all four pitchers that we have seen today here. 2-0 pitch. Braylon will swing and miss. Well, swing and follow that one off. He was sitting fastball right there, right down the middle. Got what he was thinking. Just barely missed that one. And he knows it. So he's going to take a reapproach here. The one thing, you know, we don't want here is those, those hero swings, right? Probably not going to end it on this pitch, but we need base runners. I'm going to say, a, a double is just as good as anything right now. Get a guy to second base and let Hurst come up and do some work. Braylon will swing and miss at that one. Two and two. Now the question becomes if you're Tyler Bennett, right? You got him You got him on a curveball earlier, but he just swung and missed at a high fastball. You're coming back with that high fastball again, you're dropping in a curveball. I still have one more pitch to burn, right? 2-2, two, two, I'm throwing the curveball. Right? Try to throw it as low as possible. But Here it comes. Fastball, swing and a miss. Strike three. And so we are through 10 at 0-0. Zero, zero. Going into the 11th inning here, we've talked about the uh, time limit, but I don't know if we're maybe we're just not going to have it, or we're just. But we are just continuing to roll here, just zeros all across the board, as you can see there on the scoreboard, as we're heading to the top of the 11th. Uh, is going to go back out there again. So. Yeah, and we talked about it. he's been so efficient. I mean, no reason not to, right? I mean, he's been extremely efficient, very precise. You know, attacking hitters, and you know, one thing that we probably haven't talked about enough is the fact that defensively, both teams have been incre incredibly good defensively. I mean, there really hasn't been anything that's gotten away from anybody on the defensive side, and I think that's a big reason why we're still at 0-0. Zero, zero. Yes, it's really a – I think we could just talk all day. Yeah. I mean, this is just one of those great games. Everybody's done everything right. You know, I tell my players a lot, you know, when I coach the freshman level, and – it's going to come down to who makes the least amount of mistakes. There have not been a lot of mistakes today, and that's why this game is 0-0. Pitchers have not made any mistakes with their pitching. I mean, base runners haven't made any really major mistakes here. Um, so, substitutions yep. as well. So, yeah, Christian Academy in Knoxville is going to roll out a pinch hitter to start this inning. Again, trying to find some, everybody's just trying to find some magic, right? What's some. what's what's going to find a way to scratch a run across here one way or another? Got to get something. Got to find your spark somewhere. Could be from guy on the bench. Could be from anywhere else. This first pitch is fouled off toward the dugout there on the third base side, so... Strike one on the scoreboard. And here comes the 0 1 pitch. That was a bit down, 1 1. A 
Again, that's not a misprint if you're just joining us. We really are in the 11th in a 0-0 tie game. That one's a bit high, 2-1. and one. <laughs> Yeah, there's a chance. We still might be here for this 9 a.m. game tomorrow, right? <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> Didn't think about that, but fair enough. <laughs> be prepared for that. That one is fouled off his foot. Yep, yep. The good news is that our that most of our uh, sophomore team is still here. A few of them went with their parents to go grab some food. They might have been the smart ones here. Not that we knew it was going to go for 11 innings, but... <laughs> kind of ruins our dinner plans, doesn't it? You we know, talked about that on the way down here. We did, actually. <laughs> First game. That one is grounded foul as well. Well, at the um, end of the day, though, baseball is more important than dinner. That's right, and I mean the reality of it is we were we were hoping for the buffet, but you can always hit a, you can always hit up a fast food place. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Here comes the pitch, and that one is down low. We are at three and two on the count. Three two from Shafnit, and that one is strike three. So Shafnit gets the first out on a punch out. He's been looking really good. So we are back to the top of the order here for Christian Academy in Oxville. And that one has popped. A lot of room over there for Reinman to work with. We'll see if he's able to find not just not quite enough room. A lot of room, but not quite enough room. Close. So it looks like we're, we're developing a plan if this game goes to the 12th. And from my overhearing of the dugout here, it looks like it's going to go to those tiebreaker rules. Starting a guy at second. So be interesting. Makes it a little more interesting. Yeah. We're still as Shafnett drops in a curveball for a strike there, 0 and 2. We're hoping for the Potters still to scratch one across in the bottom of the eleventh, but again, this this has been this is a game I think nobody wants to see stopped. I mean we may have even hit the time limit and nobody wanted to cancel it or call it off because it's been such a good baseball game. Very good baseball game. It's also hard to keep your focus, right, if you're out there for long periods of time, right? I mean not a ton of balls have been hit anywhere really so I don't know second baseman Turner probably hasn't got one today Stevens had a couple Rowley made that one diving catch when he got out of there in right field but other than that it's been kind of quiet it's yeah cool. yeah I mean really like I mean Newhoff and left really hasn't had much action the ball bounced over his head for a yeah. real double but really didn't it's have the best hit of the game yeah no time. without a doubt <laughs> so just got to keep that going right here so Shafton getting ready in the top of the 11th inning one out here delivers Little. High fastball. Good yeah. spot, though. That's where Yeah, I mean, they was, he was trying to hit that spot, right? I mean, I feel like it was actually the perfect pitch. Good job by the hitter, just not to chase. 1-2 on the way. That one is pop foul. That one's headed for a light standard. And it, it will bounce harmlessly into foul territory. I kind of wonder if Brooks Newhoff should actually the way this is going shade in a little bit more and left I mean it seems like this if the ball's hit out there it's going to be that little blooper type ball it could be you're right and now we're having foul ball out of play out of play out of play out of play here so one two on the way <laughs> fouled off once again consistent though like they're all going to the field behind us yeah I'm sure they were not real thrilled with us but <laughs> Well, they're still warming up, so they're, <laughs> okay. they're good over there. I mean. Here comes the wind and the pitch. That's going to be a ball. I think I was ready to get excited and call strike three, and the Potters fans were right there with me. Unfortunately, I'd say the man in blue, but he's doing more of a Johnny Cash look and going man in black right now, and then he called it a ball. I think everybody wanted yeah. Full count now. So here we go. Three, two. One out. Now the problem is we have so many oh. ups and downs that the crowds are kind of out of it. They are. Tired. Yeah, I mean, but truly. So two pitches there just barely missed. And now you're going to get a runner. Catcher. Yep, so again, catcher gets a runner. So strategically, you got to think potentially opportunity somebody to try to steal a base here. Now 
But the other mindset is, if you're the Potters, you're thinking ground ball double play, right? You're one pitch and you're out of this inning. And for those of you following along at home, we did have to get the external chargers, <laughs> both for the internet and for the iPad. That's how long this That game one is, is oh. pop straight up. Nolan chasing it. Braylon chasing it. No, right Nolan right. with the catch. And, a, right there. and again, I, I still have my external charger if we need it. Uh, great play by Nolan Reimer right there to find the fence, come back. The whole entire thing. If you can hear over here, Coach Crawford, he's directing the outfield basically to go no doubles. Yep. Just wants to make sure wants to make sure it takes two hits to score this runner. I think it's a very Here comes pitch. That one's in there for strike runner. Delay steal. Great. I mean, honestly, that's a great call by Christian Academy of Knoxville. Now you might reposition your outfit a little bit because you want to be able to throw him out on a single. Yep. It's coming down the 0-1. That pitch was a strike. So just got to keep power on. Here comes the 0 1, strike two, 0 and 2. That's some pretty good poise right there, right? From Shafton, come back after giving that guy second base. You know, on that delayed steal, maybe mess it up with your groove just a little bit. Come back and throw that big paw for strike. 0 2 pitch about to be delivered, and it will be. And that one is thrown towards center field. Sieben chases it. Sieben still chasing it, and, he, and it drops in front of him. And so, see, ball drops in front of Sieben. That's a double. And so Christian Academy in Knoxville takes a lead here in the 11th inning. It just felt like Brandon never quite saw that ball. Yeah, he was turning one way and then it actually landed backside on him right there. That's a tough one. So now we just got to refocus though. It's only one run. We still get to bat. That's right. So you can't get lay your hat on all of that. You still get the chance. And Potter's got the right guys coming up too. Yeah, three, four, five up for the Potters. Next inning. This the problem is probably going to start thinking about potentially either way. I'm assuming, right? Uh, having somebody up in the bullpen. Yeah, I mean, you got to think about it, right? I mean, on both sides. Yeah, and they got somebody throwing now. Whether you go to the twelfth or not, you got to be prepared for that. One well, one run is such a. I mean, like you feel like one is a ton in this game, but the reality of it is, one run one run isn't that big of a deal, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, Potters can find one run, but you really don't want to let a second run across here. I think you want to keep this guy, right? Potters in a great spot. Just got to keep going. That one is pop foul. That was more. Oh, we could have caught this one. We could have, but the uh, nets oh, are gonna. <laughs> One ball, two strikes right here. Top top 11, two outs. Potters really want to get this guy right here out of baseballs. Yeah, we've had that issue a couple times too here. That's what happens when he... I don't know if anything that we could do though to keep the balls in no, the field no. to play. Well, There's a lot of netting here, and they're still making it out. And I feel like we've after 11 innings, you know, you're, you've had pretty much anything and everything happen, and uh, running out of baseballs a couple times probably is relatively low on the list of things we've seen that maybe seem a little surprising. It's going to come set right here. And here comes the one two, grounded toward Ryman at third. He's up with it across the diamond. Scoop by Tanner Spangler, and the yeah. inning ends. Power's got some work to do right here. So one nothing in the bottom of the eleventh. Again, three four five do up though, so you feel good about what you what you have if you're the Potters. You can see the Potters. Just going through their plan here. You, we are, I believe we are. We are going to see a new pitcher. Yeah. Going to mix it up. Oh. First one is to the backstop. So 38 for 24 is the change here, the umpire tells us. I mean, you look out here and you see 
you know, we've got a new, little bit of short armor. Might have a little bit more velocity than we've seen so far today. Looks like a lot of hard stuff, even as off speed looks like it's got some velocity to it. More of a slider style. Yeah. Your true 12-6. Powers are going to have the right guys up, though, right? Three, four, five is who you want in this situation. Both Hurst and Baylor have both uh, battled pretty tough at their at bats throughout the day today. Yeah, I feel like Ryman had a good at bat yeah. as well earlier today. So, I mean. I all the. All yeah. I've had a lot of good at bats today. Yeah, you know, you feel like both teams, honestly, both ways, have had a lot of good at bats. It's just, just nobody ever found a way to get that one more big hit, you know, until finally in the top of the 11th, we had Christian Academy in Knoxville. And they just, you know, it's just kind of one of those, he just kind of, kind of found the barrel and it just kept carrying, you yeah. know. It's a shock, right? Yeah. Both good teams. So Hurst. To the plate for the Potters to lead off the bottom of the 11th. First pitch in there for strike. You do feel like you learn a lot from a game like this, one way or another, but obviously we'd like to see the Potters find a way to come back and at least get one this inning and keep, keep the game alive. If not, get two and find a way to win it as strike two is called there. Long hold before the 0-2 pitch. And now we're going to run through the signals between the pitcher and the catcher. Again, Wilkinson on deck. Ryan will follow him. If anybody gets on base, it'll be Tate Rowley. Here comes the 0-2. That one is up hot. Oh, he's going to ring him up. Wow. I will tell you that I thought that was probably a ball. I mean, could go either way, but... Strike three called, and so we're going. We have one out here as Baylor Wilkinson comes to the plate. I also would say the delayed strikeout call from this guy has got me a couple times. Yeah, it was a little bit late. Sorry for my silence there. It's like, oh. Ball low right there. Again, Baylor just trying to work his way on base. I think Baylor's a hard guy to pitch to, right? Because he can get the ball pretty much anywhere. Lots of power. Likely going to pull the ball somewhere. Baylor follows that one straight back. Great swing at that one. I think if anything, the velo is going to help him if he can connect, right? That is true. I mean, truly, like he's he's the type of guy. I mean, I could see him hitting a gap either way here. Get him on second base. Yeah. And then he could go put Cruz again. And he'll let Nolan Ryman try to tie the game up. Let's again, Ryman was at the plate last time. A couple of big at-bats for Nolan Ryman. So here is number 99, Baylor Wilkinson at the plate. Gets a curveball. That's a tough pitch. I mean, you know, we're seeing some we're seeing some good stuff from every pitcher today. I mean, this is one of those games that no matter what, I mean, somebody's going to end up with an L on the scoreboard, but nobody pitched badly in this ball game. This is good stuff right here. One, two on the way. Fouled off. Remains one and two. Again, we're seeing a little bit more velocity right now, and Potters have to make a tad bit of an adjustment. You know, you wonder now that as you go back to a curveball, I wouldn't mind wouldn't mind a hanging curveball here. Give Baylor a chance to again find find some of this green turf out here. Just want to make sure you're not too far on that front foot. Yeah, just weakly hit it off the end, especially with as much velo as he's bringing right now. So you might be thinking, oh, he's got to pick it up out of the hand. Here we go. One two pitch on the way. Curveball is up high. Two and two. I mean he threw one nice curveball. I still feel like he's a fastball first type of pitcher. He's gonna he's gonna try to beat you with velocity. I mean I'm surprised that would that would have been a good candidate for like a high fastball, like out of the zone zone. Yeah. Long hold. Here comes the delivery. Fastball strike three. 
Well, he's sad. He's trying to beat you with a fastball. He just yeah. got that one by him. So Potter's last hope now is Nolan Reinman trying to get it to where Tate Rowley can come to the plate. This has got to be a tough spot, right? You know, as a hitter, it's like, wow, you are down to the last out. It's on me. Brought in your pitcher. Throwing. I mean, he's throwing hard. I, I think this is you got to get your front foot down early and hope you time you just time it up right. Yeah. I mean, Potter's done, you know, most of the things right today. So don't want to take anything away from that. No, I mean, I think, again, like I said, it's a shame. Somebody's going to end up with a loss in this ball game. And, I mean, when you play 11 innings and it's a one to nothing, every pitcher who was out there was spectacular. That one's up high, one and two now. And that is going to be strike three. I think, unfortunately, no one was, was either. I think he might have been looking for another off-speed pitch. The guy sneaks the fastball there. And so our final score is the Christian Academy in Knoxville won the Morton Potters nothing. That is in 11 innings. And again, you know, it had the feel of a postseason type of game, but at the end of the day, despite the weather and the postseason feel, it's March. I think if you're the Potters, you can learn a lot from this game, despite the loss. Yeah, let's just wrap it up real quick. I mean, that was a great game. Potters, great pitching from both sides. Made everything what we wanted to be right there. Just didn't fall at the end of the way right there. And just talk about the whole entire game. It's just going to take that one big play to knock the game open for either side. And we just were on the wrong end of that, that last play. So for us, though, we'll be back tomorrow, right, 7 p.m. Uh, for out here. So if you can, we'll be on Morton Potter TV. And we will try to go live, put it on Twitter, do whatever you need. So Ryan, Coach Lindley, any final thoughts? Yeah, you know, I'm just going to echo what you said. I mean, good game. You know, one big play ends up making the difference. But nothing nothing hurt, I feel like, if you're the Potters. I mean, just you know, great game. Tate Rowley spectacular. Ryan Schaffnett really solid as well. few opportunities where, unfortunately, he couldn't cash in at the plate. But opportunity to get back out there tomorrow evening, 7 p.m. Excited to hopefully get back on the call with you. Yeah, sounds good. Well, for next time, we'll see you next week, guys. Tomorrow night. Next see, week. see you tomorrow. Sometimes we get our brains matched. Yeah, we'll say we're doing coach's show. show again. But we will be back tomorrow evening.